headphones, they fall right out of my ears. So of course, it would be helpful if I could get the rope itself not to fall out of my hands. Finish my protein shake and then we'll hit this. New name, who this? Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Bull Muscle. For those of you who know me as Beer Battered Ag, yes, I'm going through a rebrand. This seems like a pretty good time to talk about that, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I am a diehard Aggie. The eyes of Texas are upon you. That is the song they sing so well. Sound like hell! So goodbye to Texas University. We're gonna beat you all to Chigaroo the Rim, Chigaroo the Rim, Rock Tough Real Stuff, Texas A&M. Goodbye. We get a little bit more all. So why can't I click all? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice. Alright, let's do one more bronze bar. If you adopt the mindset, and this is a quote from Jacob Fisker of Early Retirement Extreme, if you know that guy, 10 points to you. But it's a, it's, it's a quote that I find unbelievably uh, poignant in today's era. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. I'm going to repeat that. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. That's painful. But yes, my friends, pure protein, as near as makes no difference from raw egg whites. It's disgusting, um, the taste is vile, and it smells, but 100, yeah, my poor roommate has to deal with the farts that come from this, and as you might imagine, they're not, ple they're not pleasant. But let me, all right, let me go ahead and walk, knock this bad boy down. <laughs> headphones, they fall right out of my ears. So of course, it would be helpful if I could get the rope itself not to fall out of my hands. Finish my protein shake and then we'll hit this. New name, who this? Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Bull Muscle. For those of you who know me as Beer Battered Ag, yes, I'm going through a rebrand. This seems like a pretty good time to talk about that, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I am a diehard Aggie. The eyes of Texas are upon you. That is the song they sing so well. Sound like hell! So goodbye to Texas University. We're gonna beat you all to Chigaroo the Rim, Chigaroo the Rim, Rock Tough Real Stuff, Texas A&M. Goodbye. We get a little bit more all. So why can't I click all? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Bull Muscle. Today we're going to get started on uh, technically what is our rest day, but I think I found a pretty good little compromise. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, I see Hachi Hibachi. Welcome to the chat. Uh, where was that money quote from? I believe you're talking about the uh, spending money is a. Let's see what it was. I remember what it was in my notebook here. I remember exactly how I said it. I believe it was. 
Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. Was that it? Uh, if it was, the answer is Early Retirement Extreme. It's a really great book, and I highly recommend it. I can talk more about that book uh, if you'd like a little bit later. Anywho, so today, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fan on, because it is, as always, what one would expect from South Carolina in uh, the month of July. It is hot, it is humid as one would normally expect. There we go. Did plug in my roommate's car. Yeah, good morning, all right. So vacuum trash, we got crash override. Welcome on in, everybody. So here's what we got on the whole agenda today. What we're gonna go ahead and do is I think we're gonna do a little bit of uh, I wouldn't quite call it hit, but we're gonna do some boxing work uh, with the wall bag back there. Uh, I'm supposed to do that, I need to do my drill. So I'll go ahead and do that. Because this is also my garage, uh, I kinda have to move things around a little bit. We, we, we make it work. Um, I'm also thinking I'm probably going to do a little bit of uh, kettlebell work, maybe some swings. I could even do a couple Turkish get-ups. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of full body press like I did uh, last Sunday. I thought that was quite nice. I, I enjoyed doing that. Even though it wasn't very high a weight, it just kind of felt nice. felt like it was a good kind of full body way to almost warm up for the bag work, you know? Thank you for the 150 bits, Vacuum Trash. I do appreciate that. 1821, all right, we got our first follow of the day. Welcome on in, thank you very much. Uh, we've got, yeah, we got a pretty good show for you. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Go ahead and move the water cup, water cup down below here. So I'm gonna stretch out a little bit. Step on the sides. Must have slapped funny. Oh. All right. So I think what I'm going to do today is uh, I think I really liked what I did last weekend. So I think I might do that again. Right. We did kettlebell swings, we did jump ropes, we did bag work, we did a dead arm hang. Oh, I'm definitely doing dead arm hangs again and full body press. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like that. So we'll start with jump rope then. Thank you. 
I just wish I, I wish I got, I wish I knew how to get better at this, but not very good at it. I'm like just killing my forearms too, it's fucking speed rope. Or not speed rope, but uh, heavy rope. I just hate it. It sucks. It hurts. It feels weird whenever I step on it. It hurts whenever I whack my toes with it. I just don't like it. <clears throat> Fuck jumping rope. Certainly sound warm now though, fuck. I'm already starting to sweat. What's up, bro? Uh good to see you as always. Uh Big Red next year the Melon I just played the bananas of the counterclocks. I love that they came and played the Savannah bananas. Uh for their sake, they shouldn't come down here in July. <sighs> They're not in here. It's already miserable as shit. <sighs> you know what? I think I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna see if I can't hit a set of 100 kettlebell swings in a row. Hey, Brussels Sprout, good to see you. Or Brussels Sprout, rather, good to see you. Good to see all y'all come on in on a Sunday morning. So, what else are we gonna do on this stream? Uh, we are going to hit, uh, as you can see, sort of more uh, high intensity, a little bit of cardio type stuff, but we're also, whenever I'm done with that, uh, I was thinking I was gonna go inside and cook a big old pot of chili, show you guys how I do that. Do it macro style. Um, you know, I give you guys exactly you know how much protein it's going to have, how much carbs it's going to have, how much fat it's going to have. Uh, let you guys break it down, and hopefully that'll be useful uh, to y'all. <laughs> Talio, welcome back. Good to see you. All right. Hey, little rocket, welcome back on in. Yeah, I see some people coming in. <laughs> Uh, it's my four. What, what, what's crazy about this jump rope is it's just how it always gets my forearms super tight. Just go ahead and do this for a moment. Do a little bit of stretching. 
touch the toes. Thank you very much for 100 more bit, bits of vacuum trash. Thank you very much. Pug Max, welcome on in. Good morning. Welcome to the bullpen, guys. All right. Sixty. Good to see you, April. As always, you take care. You have a good one. Two, three, four. 
Sports shit hosting. There's a new USF video out. It's pretty funny. Let's do full body press next. Again, we're not going for crazy high weight here. This is more just kind of a basic, just to get the heart rate up kind of deal. Hey, we got a new follower. Thank you very much, Fit Fitness. Well, you were, you came to the right channel, didn't you? Welcome. Shorts are coming out of that. Yeah. Dude, my drawing is not coming through. Drawing? We'll do two more sets of those. We'll do dead arm hang. Um, maybe I'll try a few snatches. I need to get better at those. 
and then we'll hit the bag. Nice, Sally, I appreciate it. Usually by this point it's into the mid 80s, uh, creeping towards 90, and today's no exception. Hey, Gil, good to see you. And this isn't a ton of weight, we're just doing this more for a little bit of cardio, really getting all the muscles worked and ready, so that way I can hit that wall back hard, too. definitely makes it harder here. I don't feel dead yet. Wait until I finish the bag work, then I'll feel dead. Yeah. Now we're gonna do this. We'll do three sets of dead arm hang. Then we'll do something else I was supposed to do. Let me check. Kettlebell swings, did it. Jump rope, did it. Bag work, gotta do it. No, no. That's it. Don't need to go too crazy. <sighs> For the funeral services by then? Damn. Uh, Hooch Kusi, what's your opinion on the police? Well, I live in a small town of 1,800 people, so for the most part, uh, we police ourselves. We just look after our neighbors, and they look after us. Uh, the local cops are pretty good here. But uh, I am aware that there are abuses that occur within the American police system, so I think it really depends on your location. I, I know that's not a very hot takey sort of answer, but that's the truth. I think there are good cops and there are bad cops. I mean, 
Yeah, I, I, I hate to I hate to burst your bubble, or not burst your bubble, but like I hate to uh, give you sort of a letdown of an answer, but that's really how I feel. bad and inaccurate trope. I mean, again, Hooch, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I know, it, okay. Uh, morning, Cher, good to see you. So, in my little town, it's a little bit like, you ever watched uh, the Andy Griffith show? My town's very much like that. You know, everybody knows the local cop, and everybody trusts the local cop. Uh, I get that that's not how it is in a lot of the rest of the country, but it is how it is here. So, um, in general, I think one of the biggest problems with the police is that they are asked to enforce laws that they shouldn't have to enforce. Uh, for instance, the fact that cannabis is still considered illegal means we learned nothing from the Volstead Act of the 18th Amendment, which was by far and away the single stupidest thing we've ever done as a country. Double fist bump for King Nick, here you go. All right, I'm gonna go hit another set here. I want to do this faster than I am, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that it's a rest day and I don't really want to overheat, especially if I'm about to do bag work. All right, I think we asked the cops to have to enforce laws that are stupid, and then we're shocked when they enforce the stupid laws. Like, I'll give you a good example that applies to my small town area. Three. too much leeway. Well, okay, so part of that is because they are a public sector union, and all too often unions 
both private and public, spend way too much of their effort protecting bad employees instead of giving better benefits to their good ones. Uh, this occurs in teachers unions too, where once you get tenure, you're almost impossible to fire, even if you're a terrible teacher. Uh, and meanwhile, a lot of you know, starting out teachers make peanuts because the union's not really fighting for them. Just as an example, um, but as far as, as far as police is concerned, the police has too much power to be asked to them in many instances to enforce way too many laws. Let me give you an example. Here in my little rural South Carolina town, we have a major road that takes you broadly from where I live to the next biggest city over. Uh, due to the nature of where the road goes on the other side, it goes to the nuclear site I work at. Uh, it is kept well maintained and it is, you know, a uh, four lane, basically freeway. It's not a highway in that it doesn't have separation, uh, it doesn't have hard shoulders, but for all intents and purposes, it is a road you are, it is designed for you to go fast on. The speed limit is officially 55, but nobody pays attention to that. You will get passed by everyone if you go 55. What I would say the more common speed level on that highway is a 65 to 70, and in the mornings when people are coming out to the site to work, it's as high as 80 uh, or 85. Now, when you get to my town, the speed limit drops to 45, but the road itself doesn't change. The road isn't designed any differently to alert to drivers, hey, this is a zone where you should be going slower. As a result, uh, people will continue to try and speed through the town. Well, that's all fine and good, but that's not good for our town. We don't want people driving that fast in, uh, through our town, it's unsafe. So we usually throw one of our cops up there, and as a result, it becomes a speed trap. This is one of the issues with, uh, this is what I would call a civil engineering issue disguised as something the cops have to enforce. Because we've designed the road to implicitly tell drivers drive fast, uh, they have to either constantly be staring at their speedometers or uh, they have to, you know, or they will, you know, subconsciously be driving faster than they should be. Right, if you design a road, you know, it's maybe a bit narrower. Maybe a few fewer lanes, maybe a couple bends or turns, maybe trees are right near the side. It's a lot less likely that people are going to speed because driving for the most part is a subconscious activity. Uh, once you get used to driving, you're not going to focus on it as much as you think you are. As much as we'd like that to be true, most Americans and people in general, we don't have the attention span for that. The people that are are professional racing drivers, right? So keeping that in mind, you need signals to subconsciously tell the driver to slow down. Uh, for speed, you know, for streets where you want it to be 15, 20 miles an hour, maybe this is things like speed bumps or ballers on either side. Uh, this is things like lane narrowing. This is, uh, if you want to go from a 55 to a 45 or a 35, maybe it means putting trees closer to the road. Maybe it means, uh, you know, taking down a lane. Maybe it means throwing a roundabout in somewhere instead of a stoplight, things like that. Uh, it's all, it's a lot of engineering that goes into it, but that's uh, probably not very interesting to the majority of you guys, but I figured I should talk about it. Buzzing Ranger, welcome back. Good morning. Good to see you. Okay. I'm going to do some dead arm hang and then we're going to hit boxing. All right. Um, don't need this anymore, but I'll wait to put it back up until I so, don't need to do that right this second. Take our watch, put it there so I can keep an eye on how long I've been hanging for. Turn the music back on. Let's do this.
Nice. This is working grip strength too. You can see where it's, it's putting lines on my uh, hands right there and right there. Those are calluses forming. Uh, what this is doing is it's trying to stretch out some of the stuff in my shoulders. Uh, I found that recently, uh, I had a little bit of shoulder pain when I'm benching, doing chest flies, I'm stretching my shoulders like this. And I'm trying to see if uh, dead arm hangs will help. I've never went to the cinema alone. I don't really go and watch movies these days. Someone actually offered, uh, someone invited me to go watch the Barbie movie with um, uh, a couple of friends. I'm like, I have no interest in that. Um, and Oppenheimer would be a film I'd have interest in if I trusted Hollywood to portray the nuclear industry correctly. And frankly, I don't. Um, it's not really a secret that uh, Hollywood has for a long time had quite an anti-nuclear bias and an anti-American bias. So I, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very hesitant to give them my money anymore. I just don't watch that many movies, unfortunately. Uh, I don't idle well. I I'm one of those people that I don't. I don't want to just sit back and do nothing for three hours. Like when I wake up, not wake up, but like when I get up after I've had a movie, I feel all stiff and achy. I feel like I've just gotten off of an airline flight. Why would I want to pay to do that? I don't like it. No, yesterday, I'll tell you what, here's a great example. Yesterday, I went for a 10 mile bike ride, round trip, all the way to uh, my little hiking spot and back. It was lovely yesterday, it was only maybe 90, 91 degrees, wasn't too uh, sunny, and I was the only one there. And I went there on my bike. Like, I, I don't know if that's maybe just me being strange. Maybe that's just who I am. Uh, but I'd rather go and spend time outside. And by the way, that whole trip was free. I didn't even use a single electron uh, electricity to get there. Oh, and you better believe I burned about a thousand calories that whole trip, and it was fantastic. I may do it again today, honestly. Forgot how much I love cycling. I finally fixed the inner tubes on my little cheapo. I actually got this used from Craigslist, hundred dollar beater bike, and I love it. All right. So you work in a nuclear plant? No. I work in the nuclear industry, but I don't work in a nuclear plant. Ever wonder why I say peace sells, but who's buying a lot on this channel? There you go. Damn. 
Only at 30 seconds there. Hands to start to sweat. I was teleported with no knowledge of nuclear plants, so the chances of me walking to a place of lethal, lethal radiation levels zero. Unless you got transported to the, unless you got teleported to the elephant's foot within the Chernobyl exclusion zone, the answer is zero. Right? There's nowhere you would go within a commercial nuclear operating plant that would affect you, would get you those levels of radiation. It, guys, okay. Nuclear reactor operators get far less radiation in their, in their careers over a lifespan uh, than commercial airline pilots do. This is because you get a lot more cosmic radiation uh, above the atmosphere when, when you're on a plane, for instance. Uh, no, nuclear, nuclear energy is extremely safe. Uh, the only times it has been dangerous is when you've had a truly shocking natural disaster. You gotta remember the, the Tohoku earthquake in uh, Japan it, that caused the Fukushima meltdown. First off, TEPCO ignored the regulatory agencies that said they should have moved their emergency diesel generators up, but that's a different story. Uh, the, the earthquake was a magnitude nine. Even for Japan, that is almost unheard of in terms of how strong it was. Uh, and the earthquake itself and the subsequent tsunami killed thousands. Uh, the amount of radiation deaths from Fukushima, I believe, is like two. Uh, in fact, there were more people killed as a result of the stresses of having to relocate from the exclusion zone that were killed by any radiation released by the plant meltdown. Uh, Chernobyl is not a failure of nuclear energy. Chernobyl was a failure of communism. It was a failure of Soviet communism. It's that simple. Uh, the reactor was poorly designed. It was run by people who didn't know what the hell they were doing because their uber secretive government refused to tell them because it was built on the cheap and the higher ups in the Soviet nuclear industry knew the design was bad, didn't do anything to stop it because it was, it's just how the communist system was. It kept secrets. No. Uh, It, it always, it always, the, the people who are against nuclear because of Chernobyl, to me, are people who are about, that'd be like being against, it'd be like being against cars because the Mosvich is a bad, is a badly engineered piece of crap. No, the problem wasn't the technology, the problem was the horrific system that was using the technology. All right, let me get, Another. I'm gonna get another song going, and then I'm gonna play it on. There we go. My concern was with nuclear power is all this nuclear waste storage. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I see your Chernobyl reference. Um, Main concern with nuclear power is always nuclear waste storage. So I get this question a lot. Well, what do we do with all the waste? Okay. All the nuclear waste that has been generated by U.S. commercial reactors for the last, what, 75 years? All of that waste could fit stacked about 20 feet high on one football field. That's it. For 75 years of nuclear energy. Think about that. Okay? That's not a lot. That is not a large chunk of land to dedicate to a emergency storage or containment building. The problem is we have something called nimbyism in this country, which is not in my backyard, even though as long as you surround nuclear waste with uh, you know, a basic radiation shield, this can be lead, this can be concrete, this can be even pools of water, works just fine. In fact, uh, where nuclear waste is currently stored due to that NIMBYism, the United States being unable to create and finish a nuclear waste repository, we would have had Yucca Mountain, but you can thank Harry Reid and the uh, Senate Democrats in the state of Nevada for blocking that project. Uh, but <laughs> a lot of nuclear waste right now is just stored on the site at nuclear power plants in pools of water because it's perfectly stable there. Can you drop it in a volcano? You could, but even just transporting it up there would be far more risky than keeping it where it currently is. 
you could also drop all the way into a subduction zone uh, in deep in the ocean. I wouldn't recommend this, but you could do it, and it would be a way to get rid of radioactive waste. The simple answer is that we've actually had technologies to consume 95% of that nuclear waste since the mid-1960s. It's called a breeder reactor. The trouble with the breeder reactor, however, is that the resultant waste, which is a lot lower in quantity, is a lot more potent. Uh, so imagine, right, so we just talked about that whole football field, right? The whole football field, if that's the nuclear waste that's been there for 75 years, right, for the whole of the United States. If we had thrown that all into breeder reactors and used that to generate power, the resultant waste would only cover five yards, right? Now. You get to that point, okay, that waste is a little bit more potent. But that, I mean, hell, that's not a lot of, that is not a lot of space required to take up. We have places like Fort Knox. We have military-grade bunkers and storage facilities. You can't sit here and tell me that we can't handle that, especially with all the other pros that nuclear energy gives us. And let's not forget, by the way, all the waste. Everybody, everybody loves to talk about nuclear waste and how dangerous it is. Right? Let's not forget how dangerous coal ash byproduct waste is. Let's not forget how dangerous the waste of creating solar panels is. Solar panels deals with heavy elements. We're talking cobalt, cadmium, stuff that is quite carcinogenic to humans, just in the same way that radioactive waste is from a nuclear plant. All right? It, all that waste never gets the same scrutiny as nuclear waste does, because nuclear scary is the simple answer. And by the way, no, nuclear waste is not this green glowing goo that will give fish three eyes. That's not how it works. It's usually spent fuel rods. So it's basically metal rods that are radioactive. And hell, even then, you can go to a nuclear plant and walk around the waste as many times as you want, and you won't get irradiated because it's inside water. Water is a very effective neutron absorber. Usually, the way nuclear waste is stored in the long term is that after it's, so okay, so nuclear waste is primarily spent fuel rods that have been uh, going through the nuclear fission cycle in a reactor to generate electricity, right? Once those spent fuel rods are removed, they're placed in the water to cool down because the fission process takes time uh, to slow, right? It takes time to, you know, cool the reactors down, make them both less thermally reactive and less radioactive. Once you get to that point, once they've cooled off for a while, they're usually sealed up in concrete and lead, put into dry casks, and then that's it. They're, they're just there on site. They're just dry cask stored. We've known how to do that since the 60s as well. Uh, people say nuclear waste is this big, scary problem, and it really isn't. Uh, not to mention, again, you know, this, this is assuming we don't want to use a breeder reactor uh, as a way to consume the vast majority of that result of waste. I mean, we only get roughly 5% of the ultimate uh, atomic power we could from conventional fuel rods because we don't want to use breeder reactors. What if I said nuclear energy is the best, worst option we have for energy? Um, as far as, I mean, best, worst option, that's one way to put it. There's, it's a situational thing too, right? So one of the biggest issues with nuclear energy is that it's better for baseload power. So nuclear energy is terrific for replacing coal, which is a no-brainer. Uh, if you are switching from nuclear to coal, as the nation of Germany is, you have lost all common sense and any credibility as an environmentalist. Uh, if you give a damn about the environment, you would be in favor of switching coal for nuclear. Coal is extremely dirty. Uh, but with regards to the other options, hydro has its problems. Dams fail, and when they do, the events are catastrophic. For instance, I believe the deadliest power generating station failure of all time was the Bangkiao Dam failure in China in the 1970s. Would you look at that? It was another communist country. Oh my gosh. It's almost like communism's a really bad fucking system. 
Uh, no, the, the Bacchiac Dam was designed by the USSR, so much like Chernobyl, it had major flaws in construction. And of course, it was built by malice, which means it was built poorly as well. When it failed, it killed 500,000 people. But you know, that's, that's apparently nothing compared to uh, any nuclear problems. Uh, moreover, you have the issues that dams cause with local wildlife. For instance, the Columbia River Dam, great as it is for generating clean electricity, makes it a lot harder for salmon to go upriver to respawn. Uh, and it's caused a lot of trouble for the native salmon population, which in turn has caused some trouble for the native bear population because the bears eat the salmon uh, and it has been disruptive to wildlife. Solar panels are largely the same thing. It can hurt desert flora and fauna because it's taking up a lot of space. Uh, it can fry birds, especially if you go with the uh, solar technology where it's, you've got a big tower in the middle and you've got mirrors rotate, uh, sending solar energy to the tower. If a bird flies through that, the thing's turning into a fried chicken pretty much instantly. Uh, wind power does kill birds, but wind, wind and solar the biggest problems really are intermittency. Uh, they, they just aren't reliable enough to generate base load electricity off of yet. They're getting there. Uh, wind and solar are a lot more credible as options in 2023 than they were in 1995 you know, or whatever, but they're, they're not perfect. Uh, and fossil fuels, I think you guys all know the problems with fossil fuels. I don't think I need to sit here and explain that. All right, let me do another set. Here we go. So there's no new inventions of creating energy? Well, sure, there's plenty of them, but they have their problems too. Geothermal energy, terrific in theory, but the problem with geothermal, let me move this over a bit. Nah, I'm gonna set you guys up on that. Wait a minute. There we go. So let's take geothermal for instance, right? Gonna work. Not really. All right. So uh, let's talk about geothermal as an instance. Uh, geothermal has issues in the sense that it only works in terms of producing energy at a reasonable price if you have uh, shallow access to hot temperatures. This works in places like Iceland, where you're basically on a fault line, and as such, you have access to easy amounts of lava. Doesn't work quite as well in, well, most of the rest of the world. You also have wave power, wave water power, uh, or wave hydropower. This works rather well where the tides are high, but of course, that may cause local wildlife disruption there as well. So it, it's all trade-offs, like everything in life, it's, it's all trade-offs. Um, Wind turbines are the most sinister looking sources of energy. That's one way to put it. Um, you know you don't like communism. Yeah, no, communism is a terrible system, uh, at least in every form that it's been tried. Perhaps in the future, uh, when we do not live in a economy, when we, if, we ever, if we can ever achieve a zero scarcity society, communism or some form of Marxism may work better. At the present time, we're nowhere near close to that. Um, how do you feel about socialism? Okay, so the problem here is that different people have different definitions of socialism, and I feel very differently about certain versions. Um, if you want to talk about what's, oh, a lot of people like to call socialism in the modern vernacular, that means something like uh, the Nordic model, uh, or the model seen in some Western European countries. To me, I would not call that socialism, I would call that welfare state capitalism, or more progressive capitalism, or just in general, a mixed economy. Um, but it has its upsides and its downsides. In general, 
for most things, not for all of them, but for most goods and most markets, I think keeping the economy relatively deregulated and free is the better way to go. I'm mostly a centrist when it comes to politics, but economically, I'm a bit more pro-capitalism than uh, pro-government. I don't think the government can really do things quite as efficiently as the free market. Now, there are some instances where the opposite is true. For instance, uh, I can make the argument that nationalizing rail makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's been proven to work in a lot of other countries, and due to the nature of Right. What you don't want is you don't want a shit ton of different rails uh, from different companies going to the same location. So that's inefficient. It, it makes about as much sense as you know having different sewer lines doing the same thing. There's what's called natural monopolies. And for natural monopolies, government intervention or a more socialistic system makes sense. Socialism, the other definition, uh, more the classical definition, where uh, workers own the workers own the means of production. Uh, either via syndicates or through the government, I'm less of a fan of uh, in general. In some industries it may work, uh, in a lot of other industries it's very ripe for corruption. So it really, it really, again, it's, you gotta be a pragmatist. Uh, it really depends on the situation. So we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves wrapped up here. I gotta remember how to do this. I'm still learning how to wrap myself, so. So you're just a huge fan of capitalism? Not a huge fan of capitalism, but I do think it's actually, yeah, the best, worst option we have. Uh, in general, I think capitalism is a pretty good way to go, though. Yes. This shouldn't surprise you. I'm a centrist American living in rural South Carolina. I'm not quite sure what you were expecting. All right, so let's see here. All right, a little bit of thumb. Risk three to four times. One, two, three, four. And backhand across the palm. One, two, three. And across the wrist again. One. Uh, across the thumb. This one's always a tricky bit. One, across the wrist again, and then finger, wrist, finger, wrist. Yeah. Again, finger, wrist. Hold up, I got that. There we go. One done, the other to go. Capitalism is working for some, somewhat. Yeah, uh, again, every system has its flaws. Uh, Colm, I, yeah, I'd say in general, it, I am more of a capitalist than I am any uh, a fan of any other uh, system. What I like is efficiency, and in general, uh, you know, again, it really does depend on the industry. There are some exceptions. Uh, the American system, at least, has done really well uh, in this regard. Economic growth continues to rise, and for better or for worse, I mean, things are pretty good, at least here. Um, the other one I found really funny, there, there are problems I have with capitalism, by the way. The, the, the encouraging of mindless consumerism bothers me, for sure. But it could be a lot worse. Okay. Let's get the other one on. So, see if I can do it without having to look at the other one. So, so, thumb, wrist once, twice, three times, four times. Four times, that's four times, and then all one, two, Three, wrist, once. Um, it's hard. Learning, learning how to wrap is not easy, I feel like. Uh, oh, and then thumb. Okay. Wrist. And then. 
by the way, um, I should mention that just because I feel a certain way about an issue uh, doesn't mean that I'm necessarily 100% right uh, or that you know all other opinions are wrong. Just want to make sure that that's perfectly clear and understood. There are lots and lots of good reasons to believe in just about anything. And you gotta think for yourself. So just because I believe something doesn't mean it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, you know? You gotta think for yourself. I think that really, that's important. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're all wrapped up. You have the perfect amount of strap to wrap it fully. You always consider the 8 billion picture worldwide and discussing broad topics, not only yourself, your city, your country. Absolutely, exactly. Um, and it, it is it is absolutely a good, a good idea to think about things from a global perspective instead of just a, a local perspective. Um, I never think I'm completely right about anything. Absolutely, I mean, shit. I used to be a lot more left-wing economically. Um, I've also been a lot more right-wing economically. Yeah. My views have shifted a lot over time, and they probably will continue to shift because I'm trying to continue learning, continue uh, becoming a better person. And the more I learn, the less I the less I figure out that I really actually know. All right. So here's what we're gonna do next. Um, you guys should be able to let me see here. All right. Yeah. You guys should be able to see. Uh, the bag work coming in pretty good here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play uh, a little bit of music and I'm gonna be hitting the bag work the next three minutes. Then we'll come back, we'll take a rest. I'm gonna hit the bag work again for three minutes. I might do four rounds this time. I did three rounds last time. I'd like to, I'd like to improve on that, I think. And then let me turn this off because there's no, there's no reason to have it on. At least, you know, not while I'm over here. This is going to be a really hot image here in just a moment, but whatever. We'll, we'll learn. We'll live with it. Okay. We're going to start with Gun Fly now, I think. You have a knife and a pit bull charging to you. Plan to take a bite, a bite out of you. Can you defeat the pit? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm fucking defeating the pit. I ain't using the knife, though. Boom. One really well-timed kick, and the pit bull's fucking done for. You kick him, you kick him right, especially if you got a steel toe on, which I don't at the moment, but I wear steel toes a lot of the time. Steel toes fucking up that pit bull beyond all repair. Stream right and left, they're just parroting and not thinking of falling, in, falling into that trap. We all do. It's natural. It's human nature uh, to devolve into tribalism. Recognizing that tribalism is what you're falling into and trying to remember that this is just someone who sees things differently as opposed to someone who is wrong and therefore scum is important. It's, it's hard to do. It's definitely hard to do. All right, so we're going to... We're going to do this. Let's go. Little gun fly now by Rocky. Or, uh, I guess Bill Conti's the guy that did it, but it's the, it's the Rocky theme song. You already know. Da, 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 that one. There we go. Alright, ding ding.
Hey, RJD, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Good to see you, Quest. Cheers. So how's the angle? Uh, still pretty used to doing these uh, boxing deals, so I'm trying to figure out what the best angle is. You know what I think I could do? Let's try that. I've got an idea. This is much better. Your brain doesn't do so well in the heat. All right, let's go. We'll do uh, a little eye of the tiger here. That's a pretty good one. All right, round two. Temperature is. 89, God, it's getting warm in here fast. And it's hotter over here because the sun's coming in. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun.
Some dude watching stream. You are some dude watching stream. Welcome. Thank you. You're me, you got me basically. Nice muscle, I appreciate it. <laughs> now this is a, uh, it's a windy wall bag. Appreciate the follow. So we're gonna carry on. We got two more rounds on this. We're gonna head in. I'm gonna do a little cooking. Can you smell what the bull is cooking? That's a little bit better. Have you ever thought about joining uh, boxing? No. I really feel like getting any concussions instead. Concussions suck. I'm doing this because I need to improve my endurance. And because my mom and my wonderful bro gave me this as a birthday present. Glistening with sweat. I am running warm this morning. You're gonna hit it though. All right. You're gonna breathe my fabulous. Let's go. So we got a haircut. That's right. The roomie gave me a haircut. I'm gonna bend down the mohawk. I think long term. If I'm keeping the mustache, I might try and go for the, the Chuck Liddell look. Especially if I bulk, I feel like I can pull that off pretty well. What am I fucking doing? You at least can't breathe.
Please don't hit my car with a cone. That's the plan. <sighs> we interrupt this broadcast for my roommate leaving. That's all right. That's only letting the bugs in and making it even hotter. So I see we've got 32 people in chat. It means y'all have room handstand push-ups. We'll hit those whenever we're finished here. We got one more round.
Take off the gloves, hang them back up. One wrap. Let's go ahead and we'll get handstand push-ups. Need some fucking height. Let's go. We did four rounds of that today. We'll do five next time. Oh, God, I'm sore. All right, final temp check. Yeah, 91. There's probably about 80% humidity in here. Let's do this. Uh, there's a fucking handstand push up. Hi, y'all. That was good. That was real good. Sit down. Oh, I'll take our shoes off and then we're gonna do some handstand push-ups. Hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Now, I have found so far that kind of keeping it lighter and more cardio oriented like that has been a lot better than what I used to do, which is a lot of hit. Right, like I was doing uh, hit for a while and I noticed it was damaging my Monday morning workouts, so I'm gonna keep an eye on how I do tomorrow. If I'm like way down on power, uh, I'm probably going to tone it back a little bit on Sunday. Maybe, you know, see how I feel. My shoulders are sore. Um, I don't think that's just from punching. We'll see how I feel. It's actually, handstand push will be the perfect thing to figure out just how we're doing on that front. We'll do that, we'll do abs, we'll go from there. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm covered in sweat. Oh, wait, I gotta turn the light on over here. That's ah, more like it. Okay. 
Thanks for the shout out to uh, Red0578, I think. Or 4578, something like that. Yeah. Thanks for the shout out, Red4578, on your USF video. Wishing you and the USF crew all the best. You guys, you guys are the heart and soul of sports shit for this team. All right, anyway, I'll do some handstand push ups. Hopefully, my shoulders don't hurt too much. Three, four, one, two, three. And if you like what I do, by the way, and you want more of this content, come join the Discord. That's where a lot of the, the fun stuff happens. <sighs> oh, shit. <sighs> nah, I didn't do that right. Yeah, my shoulders are definitely not the best for wear right now. <sighs> Give myself just a little bit of time. Reset. Reset. I'm still gonna do them. Just gotta. Oh, there we go. That's much better. Yeah, I didn't feel too bad. Some dude watching stream, bro, checked his mom as a marvelous muscle. To be honest, my mom has a big ass Great Dane, and that's his job. That's that's my mom's dog's job. All right. So here's what we're gonna do next. Um, I'm going to hit abs and then probably hydrate a little bit, stretch out, and then I was thinking we could do a little cooking. Uh, I have a, I had a plan to make a big old pot of chili. If you guys like to see my chili, uh, really tweak the recipe over the years to refine the macros. Make it really, really pretty good for you as far as chilies are concerned. So if you guys would like to see that, uh, I could show it. I think I didn't quite sleep right because my shoulders are both sore and my neck is also sore. What that's telling me, I think, is that I must have slept funny. That must have been what it is. Yeah, because I can feel a lot of pain in my shoulders and neck right now. And I was not, okay, right, before you say oh, it was a handstand push-ups, no, I was feeling it during and before the boxing workout too. Um, during and before the kettlebell swings, during and before the full body press. I just decided to push through it. We'll see if that got in tomorrow's push day. I'm going to have to rest or recover, I think, the rest of the day. Maybe I'll go for a light bike ride, but that's, that's all I'll do. I'll have to take it easy. Oh, well. Say lovey. All right. Let's do this, we'll hit abs. Sore. Yeah, I'm gonna have to relax for a little while after this. Uh, that's good. We'll, we'll stretch out. We'll do a little bit of that. Uh,
So we've got four more sets of abs to do. I may just do one or two sets now. I'll do the rest later, honestly. I'm, I'm pretty beat. this up. We're going to do a little stretching for a little while. I'm going to cool down a little bit, get a little water. We'll cook. We'll hit, we'll hit the rest of our abs later. I'm just, my whole body is saying, dude, you need to stop. Uh, might have overcooked it a bit in the, uh, in the garage this morning is what that's telling me. Uh, come on. Finish. Day going well, reaching a little bit of an exhaustion point here. Feeling very sore, pretty much everywhere now. Um, all of a sudden, so it's not ideal. Um, I'm gonna stretch out for a bit. I'm gonna try and cool this off. We'll go from there. Cut. Yeah, that's right. I did get a little haircut last night. Thanks for noticing. All right, we're gonna start. We're gonna do a total stretch routine. I don't like stretching, but my body is very clearly telling me I should. All right, triceps. Shoulder circles. Backwards. <laughs> okay, can feel something back there. Oh yeah. Morning trigger. And on our shoulder. from Mark 1703 done and done sir since we did a boxing workout today I'll do the Rocky theme
da ba da 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 ba da 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 There you go. Uh, okay. Stretch out the lats. Stretch out the upper back. Stretch out the hamstrings. <sighs> Hang on. So you guys can judge me. Seated stretch. Oh, get the non alcoholic shit. What are you talking about? Also, welcome. Good to see you, Al. Oh, God. The soreness is real right now. I will tell you all that much. is just that I uh, I'm not very flexible <laughs> words cannot express how much I hate this shit but I need to do it <laughs> Kill me, honestly. I, this is so miserable. Who likes this? What is wrong with you people? Who sits here and says, yes, this is something I wish to do with my time? Use a large, go get a plate and put it forward. You can get back at me and stretch me out. Shit, I don't wanna do that. I really don't wanna go back out there and get a plate. I probably should. It's actually a really good idea, but. I may try that one off hours. I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. It is that bad, I fucking hate this. I hate stretching so much. 
Keep an eye out, Aubrey. Yeah, the uh, the USF video was pretty funny, but uh, Red definitely had a couple last night. Oh God, okay, quads. <sighs> what the fuck? Oh my God. No more, no more, no more. Anything, make me do abs, make me do bench until I fucking die, make me box, I, I don't care, just no more stretching. I hate stretching so much. Uh. <laughs> Everything feels worse now. They say, oh yeah, you feel great after stretching. The fuck you do, no. No, stretching starts, you start by feeling sore and you end feeling worse. Hate stretching, man. Then there's me who's supposed to have to deal with someone from Cowtown. Auburn fan? Or is there a different Cowtown? No, I... I cannot, words cannot express how much I dislike stretching. Oh, Wolfie. A hot shower makes it feel better. Actually, that does sound pretty good right now. Uh, I'm feeling it, the most pain I'm feeling today and like the, just it's just soreness. It didn't feel like anything's fucked up. I feel like it's just sore as my shoulder. My left shoulder, nah, my right shoulder too. Really both of them. Is that my neck? Mm. or two in the past maybe that's why I don't like this it just makes me feel all ugh. I, just, I hate stretching I fucking I don't like it I don't like thinking about it I don't like doing it I don't like talking about it I just fucking don't like it stretching is awful and people who say they like stretching are psychopaths seriously it's like fucking torture man I don't understand you people who like stretching. I really don't. I, I don't understand it at all. Not not even a little bit. God. Yeah. You're a psychopath. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, like, this actually reminds me of a funny story. We were, uh, <laughs> This is with an ex a while back, and we decided we wanted to have, this is an 18 plus stream, and I have the sexually explicit content label on here, so I should be able to talk about this. We were having, we were trying to spice a few things up in the bedroom, and so we went the, um, the kink route, and, you know, uh, my ex had this idea that, um, it would be fun to see if, you know, I could actually be physically exhausted. So it was, you know, just push-ups, sit-ups, wall sits, just, just, just trying to absolutely fucking break me. And I kept going, and I kept going, kept going, like, one giving an inch. And then she's like, okay, we're gonna have to try something different. So we started doing stretch routines, and I was fucking, like calling uncle and like, and like like I was begging to stop like after maybe a minute two minutes tops I fucking hate stretching I hate it so much seriously like you put me through whatever fucking workout you want me to do I won't complain until the stretching begins Okay, um, suppose it's time. We're gonna transition to the kitchen a little while. I gotta let the laptop charge up a bit first. Pleasure is one way to counteract the stretch pain. <laughs> yeah, 
I suppose so. Uh, it was fun. That was a fun evening. But yeah, I was all hot shit uh, right up until the stretching came in. I was begging for mercy. <laughs> it's awful. Hey, I'm sorry. I just, I do not like it. I don't even I don't even like I don't even like considering doing it. I should probably get the like a 25 and try that. This is not a bad idea. Um hmm. I'm going to do that though. It'll be a little it'll be a little break um to get that back in here. Y'all cool with that? I'll uh I'll get I'll get myself a 25 pound plate and actually try doing like a like a hamstring stretch with that cuz I do think that's a good idea and I should probably do it but uh, I'll have to go back out into the garage and get it. So I'm going to do that. <sighs> Try heating every joint before you stretch like a hot shower to loose up. But no. Just, oh, I don't like it. Just, I can feel my body aching just thinking about that. <laughs> So we're good there. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go get uh, a plate and God help me, I think I'm actually going to try what Trigger Bell is suggesting here. Your body will slowly get used to it. It hasn't though. Almost fucking 30 and I hate stretching now just as much as I hated it when I was a teenager. All right, well, I'll be right back y'all. What I'm gonna go do is grab a plate and torture myself some more, I guess. Give me one minute, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get it. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, uh, yeah, um, definitely really feeling a lot more pain. It's, it's not just my shoulder now. I feel like it's my uh, upper triceps. That was so loud. Huh. We'll have to, I'll have to mess around with that. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't, I didn't realize that was... Hmm. Let, me, let me write that down so I can fix that later. BRB too loud. Okay. All right, let's let's do this. Don't want to. Just every every single ounce of my being does not want to do this. It's like the dog going to the vet, you know. Just 
Please, no. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. the message before the wheel be right back you will lunge stretch with the back leg against the wall too that's actually a pretty good idea all right so this is a 25 pound plate for 15 seconds. That wasn't 15 seconds. Felt like a fucking eternity. three to seven well that's not bad actually all right I'm gonna try that one more time God help me so bad. Why? I hate this. I fucking hate this so much. You're talking about this, right? The back is straight. The leg is back. It's just a lunge. I don't, I don't understand what you're telling me. I've done that before, it's just a lunge. All right. I'm gonna try and, uh, God, mm. I feel pretty fucking sore, like, more sore than I should. This is not good. Back leg is grounded, but you just pull. What the? F what are you talking? Oh, I see. You're you're talking about. 
can't really do that on a hardwood floor. That, that just hurts like a bitch. So we're gonna bring the pad out a little bit and try it here. Sorry about that. That one doesn't do too much to me. Like that, I don't feel like I don't feel like that does a whole lot more than like a normal quadriceps stretch does. Oh. I think I think I'm done. I think I'm done stretching for a little while. This this is this is just torture. I hate this. Ah. Uh, you know what I could honestly probably would help me out. I need to just go find myself a place to get a massage. I might, I might pull the trigger on that, go bite the bullet, get myself a massage. It just sounds really nice today. Treat myself. Oh, man. Okay. Let's see. So, um, today we're going to switch over to cooking in just a moment, and we are going to hit... Uh, we're going to hit uh, making a little bit of chili. Actually, it should be pretty good. Our stretching partner. I mean, I could ask my roommate to help me, but my roommate isn't really into physical activity and whatnot either. So, I don't know, maybe. <sighs> yeah. I, I feel like I, I should get myself a massage. I haven't done that in forever, and it just sounds really, really good. All right, so, yeah, let's go ahead and... You at you? Well, all right, I mean, look. You're anywhere around, uh, you know, if you're anywhere around the South Carolina area, Always happy to meet my fans. Always, always happy for that. Oh, man. Okay, let's see here. What else? We, I think I'm gonna have to bring in the power cable because I don't quite have enough battery power to do this. Let me think for just a second on how I want to get this done. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot to finish my abs. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I'll do abs and then we'll get started in the kitchen. Oh. <clears throat> You know what? Make this a little harder. We got this 25 pound plate. I wouldn't normally do this, but since it's here. <sighs> Shit, that's pretty tough. Uh, I'm just gonna go normal. I'm already kind of overdoing it today. Two more sets. Hey, Kareem, good to see you. You're all the way in Florida? Oh, that ain't too far. Oh, I don't know the next time I'll be in Florida is, but South Carolina ain't that far from Florida.
got one more set left. Come on, you got this. Finish strong. If you're this close to being done, you might as well get it all the way done. siesta coming on today. I don't know. Well, I'll go see like I can find a massage or something. I don't think there are any, I gotta find a good like massage therapist around here. Like, I don't know any uh, in the local area. That kind of makes things harder. This one's supposed to be a rest day. I may have fucked up. Three more sets? No, I'm freaking done. Uh, that's it right there. Whew. Got about 60% of a charge left on this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and say we should be all right with getting into the kitchen. I'm gonna go place this in there, then we're gonna switch to the kitchen. And we go on get the cooking. Get ready, y'all. This is about to switch into a cooking stream. Let's do that while we're here. We're gonna turn this from fitness and health to food and drink. Boom, done. Tell you what, I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick and then we're gonna get started. All right, you're ready y'all. Sorry about that, y'all. Hey, x -Hector, I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back, good to see you. We are just about to enter the kitchen and we are going to do a little bit of cooking today. We're going to address the diet section of diet and exercise, right? So let's begin. Oh wait, let's go. Scenes, kitchen. OK. 
Okay. We are now live in the kitchen. We are going to set this camera up nice and easy here. So we, there we go. Folks, just trying to get this set up. Come on, get on in there. Get on in there. Oh, you know you want to. There we go. Nice. Very, very good. All righty. Let's perfect. Get the cord out of the way. Excellent. Okay. Just tweaking the angle a bit so you guys can see a little better. Perfect. Okay, Chad. So today we are going to make ourselves a big pot of chili. All right. Chili is really basic, simple, easy to make food that, if done correctly, can actually be quite good for you macro wise. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. Okay. If you guys have any questions, you can let me know. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to start by getting out our ingredients. First thing we're going to need is chili. We're going to want some beans. Yes, I am a person who puts beans in chili. The reason I do this is very simple. It's economical. They're good calories. Beans have lots of fiber. Uh, and they're inexpensive. The other thing we're going to do is get our chili tomatoes. Can of that there, and we also could use a thing of crushed tomatoes. Perfect. All right, that should start with our canned goods. Uh, now we need our fresh stuff. I like an onion in my chili. Moreover, not just any onion, a Vidalia onion. And I quite think, and I, I I'm, I'm quite. Uh, fond of these Vidalia onions here in Georgia and in South Carolina, in this part of the southeast, I should say. Uh, they're very popular because they have a lovely sweet taste to the point where you can really you can eat them raw and they're still very tasty. Um, let me go ahead and put the chat doc back on so I can see what chat's up to. There we go. Go. Peel the onion. God's okay. So here we go. You've never had chili, really? Huh. I uh, I will be honest. Uh, you you're if you're an American and you've never had chili, that is uh, quite strange. My chili's nothing. In, it's nothing incredible. It's not the food. Okay, right. So when I do food on this channel. I make sustenance, okay? My food isn't gourmet, it isn't world-class, but it's reasonably affordable, it tastes good uh, enough, anyway, and it is uh, reasonably healthy. It's also not overly difficult to make, and it's reasonably sustainable. Not overly so, but I don't go out of my way to buy, you know, super carbon-intensive ingredients either. So we're going to just do a rough chop on this onion. Because my roommate uh, has texture issues, I'm going to end up having to blend this anyway, which is alright. So we're going to throw this in a little blender. And I'll tell you what, a stick blender is one of the best inventions. I'll, sh I'll show you guys. Oh, this this five day onion just... Mmm. Oh, lovely sweet flavor. Mmm. It's delicious. And Vietnamese mostly eat Vietnamese food. Man, I will fuck up a banh mi anytime. Uh, Havatiti, is that chili spicy? Yes. Chili should be pretty good. You smell burning plastic. Okay, don't worry, I'm not turning this burner on. Um, get the duct tape. Um, hold a rocket, don't worry about it. Uh, and yeah, the, no, these beans are pretty, 
these beans are pretty good uh, in terms of uh, cost efficiency. So, but they're also a lot better in convenience. These are basic Aldi brand chili beans. They have a nice little flavor to them, and they've got seven grams of protein per 100 grams, 110 grams or bah, 110 calories, which is not amazing, but it's good enough. So we're gonna do that. Um, Leon Love, what's a good diet to start for beginners who are starting a fitness journey? Okay. I recommend getting a pencil and paper or an app on your phone. I'm old fashioned, I, I like a pencil and paper. Everything that goes in your mouth, write down the calories, the, the protein, the fat, and the carbs. Find a calorie target, try to set that as your goal, and then do the same thing with pr uh, protein. The, the challenge is getting enough protein while not having too many calories. All right, easy. Uh, we're also going to use meat for this. Should not be a surprise. Um, I'm going to use a package of this lovely Costco brand ground turkey. The reason I'm using this ground turkey is that uh, they sell it for the package to cooperate. There we go. They sell it for a reasonably inexpensive uh, amount at Costco. You can buy it in bulk, and as such, it's just very easy to work with. I quite like it. If it's good stuff, we're going to use it. I could also throw in, you know, you can make chili with beef. You can make chili that's vegetarian. You can make chili with chicken. You can make chili with pork. The nice thing about chili is it really, it, it's very flexible as to what meat, if any, you want to put in there. I'm using ground turkey. <laughs> Dang, can I be a bond me? Um, so as far as a good diet to start with beginners, focus on tracking your macros first. Uh, and really the, the key is what you want to look for are foods that have high protein, low calories. So if it's got more than 10 grams per 100 grams of protein, it's great and eat a good, eat a good amount of it. Uh, yeah, track your macros for sure. Spell work, good to see you. There we go. Okay. So we are going to take our chili here, or our ground turkey here. We're going to open up the package. And it's just, you know, any old basic ground turkey. Nothing, nothing too spectacular here. There we go. Open up the package. Throw the package in the pot. Like so. We don't waste, I try to waste as little as possible. So we'll take a little, we'll take a spatula here. We'll scrape off the sides of the packaging, make sure we get all the turkey we can. Cause you know, if you're, you know, a living, breathing animal died to make this, this meal happen, right? To make this turkey happen. So let's respect that and use every little bit of it that we can. And again, it's, you know, it's just basic old ground turkey. It's not, it's not, or, you know, organic. It's not farm to table. It's not whatever stupid, you know, highfalutin adjective people are using this week. Just fucking basic ground turkey. It's, it's, it's not complicated. Chili is not supposed to be a complicated meal. It's supposed to be really basic. And that's what I really, one thing I really like about it. All right, that'll work. Go ahead and rub the rest of the inside of the bag on this side. There we go. That's, as far as I'm concerned, cleaned off, or picked off pretty clean there. So we're going to get that out of the trash can, wash our hands off because food safety, we gotta handle raw meat properly. There we go, washed our hands. Turn this over here. Love making ground turkey tacos. Absolutely. Ground turkey is great for tacos. It's not as good as beef for burgers, but it gets the job done. Um, could you name any foods that are fit for that category? Yeah, chicken breast is a really great one. Okay, so here's a great example. I've got a frozen container of chicken breast in the, in the freezer here, right? Yes, I bought the half price stuff that was just about to go bad at all. You better believe I'm that kind of shopper. But for every four ounce serving, okay, it says uh, 110 calories, right? 
22 grams of protein. That's really good. Just as an instance, all right? I'm making chili. Uh, it's nice to see you making chili. Can you pick me out some uh, basil? Uh, sure. Thank you. Also, by the way, I got you peaches. Oh, really? Actual Carolina peaches from Chesterfield County. Well, that's good. Yeah. And the harvest has been really bad this year. A lot of the crop failed, unfortunately. Eric, 4506, thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate that. Okay, so where were we? Now, we need to season our chili, or I need to season our meat, rather. I'm going to take a little chili powder, drop it in like so. We want our paprika, lots of this. I don't really measure much. I don't feel it necessary. Cayenne, gotta have cayenne. And then I like a little Cajun seasoning. Tony Sachery's or Slap Your Mama Works. I have this off-brand stuff, but it's almost as good. All right, so those will be most of our dry seasonings. Use a spatula and mix that in. And we'll go ahead and turn the oven on. Or the stove top on, I should say. Mix it in a little bit. We'll let that cook. This is 93% lean chili, so I believe uh, the nutrition facts on this are I want to say it's 160 calories per serving and 22 grams of protein, which is pretty good. For people new to fitness, should try to eat their weight in grams of protein. If you're 155 pounds and 155 grams of protein, that's a pretty good way to go about it. I would say, yeah, in general, that's not a bad target. Um, I'm pretty close to that. 200 grams for me, and I weigh about 210. But, <coughs> excuse me. Ugh. Mm. Five second rule. Okay, we put our canned stuff over here for now. We are also going to take some garlic. Garlic is very good. It very much belongs in chili. I actually don't have any fresh garlic at the moment. If you have any green onion, too, if there's any green onion out there, I'd appreciate that I as just, well. I was just out there. there it's not ready yet. <sighs> There we go. The jar was stuck on it. So. Nice heaping bit of garlic. I like a lot of garlic in my chili. And I feel like as it roasts down, uh, it just improves the flavor a lot. So I throw a very healthy chunk of garlic in my chili. And we'll mix it all in. Again. So we got our very garlic heavy spice heavy meat and it's gonna cook up how many gigaways do you want um give me quite a few give me at least like a solid seven right now. <laughs> my roommate brings in so much junk food to this house that does make things harder but she's awesome so Kelsey, thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate that. Do we have a vegetable garden or herb garden? Yes, uh, so my roommate does do a lot of that. Oh, I forgot to add, of course, black pepper. Lots of black pepper. Oh, what am I doing? I totally forgot one other thing to add to my chili. I like a little cumin. Not too much, but get a little bit of it. Mix that in as well. Terrific. Okay, so uh, I appreciate the first time chat. Welcome to the bullpen, Kelsey. Uh, always good to see you. But yeah, um, see here in South Carolina, basically everything grows uh, really easily, usually. Um, and as such, we get great produce, and I have half an acre here, so there's plenty of room in the backyard to grow stuff. Dodger, to her credit, has a green thumb, and she's grown, gosh, she's grown 
okra, watermelons, lots of different basils. She tried corn, but the corn failed this year. Uh, garlic, green onion, a few other items. Um, is it hot down south this week? It's July in South Carolina. You figure it out. The answer is yes. Um, you can assume it's just hot here until otherwise told. Uh, let's see here. Don't know if we'll end up needing the stewed tomatoes, but if we do, I'm going to have them back over here. Okay. Now, the meat's ready, so we're going to brown the meat in the pot. Uh, it's going to just put it on medium heat. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep, Rumi just got me a bunch of basil leaves. Oh, they smell fantastic, and we're going to throw these. Ah, we're gonna wash them off, and we're gonna throw these, there we go, right on in here, into the blades. Uh, this will get blended up. Uh, learn cilantro does best in fall, so I'm trying that. I love cilantro. It's so good in Mexican. It's good in uh, lard, too, like Thai. Cilantro is quite nice. Um, let's see, what else we do? You know what? It's a bit early, but I'm kind of feeling one. I have myself a beer, I think. Uh, now, I don't normally recommend drinking after, uh, I don't normally recommend drinking after uh, working out, but this is uh, non-alcoholic, actually. So, should be okay. Can I help you? Yeah, no, you're good. Mm. I got this. Cool. Mm. Toronto turned into a very arid sauna. Ooh. Huh. Um, Toronto, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Well, Toronto is on the Great Lakes, so it makes sense that it would get really humid. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not, but it's not arid down here. I'm not quite sure what you're asking me there, uh, pal. Okay, so we got our onions. We're gonna blend down the onions. Um, what's the point of drinking beer with no booze? Well, it tastes good. I like, I drink beer because I like, I like the taste. So non-alcoholic brews work just fine for me. Right? That's why, because alcohol is, so alcohol has a shit ton of calories that also prevent your liver uh, from synthesizing protein to build muscle. So that doesn't help, but I like the way beer tastes. So yeah. Oh, you're answering gay boy, got it. So do I, still weird to me? No, for sure. Um, it's also, I've just tried to really cut down on my drinking. It's just something I've wanted to do, so. That's the other reason. This, this is helping me do that. Anyway, so we're going to grab, ah, that's the other thing we're gonna need. Excuse me. So the season, once the uh, meat starts cooking down, I use a little red wine vinegar, a little bit of ketchup. Not too much, I just like ketchup because it gives it a, a hint of sweetness. Uh, and I don't use a ton, but we're also gonna use mushrooms, just basic white mushrooms. They had these on sale at the Aldi, so I picked them up. Uh, we're gonna blend those in with our onions. And that blend's gonna go in with everything else. So I brought back the lax stick up ass against red. Ha, it's funny. Uh, it's good to see you, Kelsey. Welcome on in. Thank you. That's hard. That's going to need a little bit of time to ripen. That's the softest one in there. Okay, well then in that case, yeah. That, that, that's, yeah, that's going to need some time. Okay, I'm going to blend this down. This thing's got 
is a little blender bucket attachment. So you guys see what this is. There's a blade at the bottom. Uh, this is just a stick blender, so it's going to rotate the blade, and the blade will uh, chop everything up nice and easy. So you just go put it on medium, turn it on. Maybe if we plugged it in, it would work. I'm, I'm, I'm very smart. I'm definitely, you know, at full peak intelligence this morning. Kelsey, I'm glad I found your channel. Seems like a vibe. So uh, what we normally do here, you don't let me blend it. Hang on. There we go. That thing got caught on something. Sure did. Needs a little bit more liquid. So I'll throw in a can of tomatoes. Um, yeah, so my channel, okay, so here's what my channel is really all about. This is. I believe something anyone could achieve. If you want to look like fucking this, right? If you want to have muscles, if you want to have visible abs, this is all natural. I don't take, you know, juice. I don't do anything crazy. Moreover, I do all of this on what most people consider to be a very low budget. budget. In fact, um, I will probably end up spending less than $20,000 a year to live this year. I just now, I track my budget quite religiously because it's fun and I'm a nerd, but uh, I just now uh, in finally had my total annual spending for the year 2023 past $10,000. Think about that. I mean, for the United States, that's very low. And I deliberately did that. Part of that is because I wish to become financially independent before I turn 30 years old. And to do that, that requires a little bit of discipline, and a little bit of thinking outside of the box. That, I think, is really sort of the, uh, the selling point of my channel above everything else. All right, so let's, oops. Okay, so that's blended down, which is good. I'll leave that there for now. Now let's check the meat. It's starting to cook up. Needs a little bit more time, so we're gonna wait. There's not much we get. We gotta wait for the meat to cook in uh, and start browning before we can add any other ingredients. Okay, morning, Justin. Can oh, Justin? Good to see you. Get you on the staying fit. I play ice hockey. Still, I'm turning 29 next week. Hell yeah! Let's go. Good for you, Kelsey. Um, yeah, so I, here's sort of my backstory for, since you're new to the channel, I'll explain. So, uh, my name's Bull Muscle. I am a mechanical engineer in the nuclear industry. You could also call me a nuclear engineer and that would pretty much apply at this point. Uh, I am into fitness. I'm into health. I am into staying in good shape. I'm into going outside and having fun. I'm into motivating others and I'm into financial independence. It's a little bit hard to see right now, uh, but on the top right of the screen, uh, you can see that it says financial independent, I'm free. Uh, you know what, here, let's move my, I don't need my tea kettle anyway. Just put it over there for now. There we go, it says financially independent, I'm free 647 days. I will be able to retire before I turn 30. I've done this, I haven't made, you know, huge returns on the stock market, I haven't won the lottery. I've just been very intelligent with the way I've spent my money and saved my money, frankly. And if you guys are curious, I can explain sort of how I do everything in my day-to-day -day life. And if you really want the details, come join the Discord. That's where you're gonna see the majority of that. Okay, um, the other thing I'm gonna wanna blend in are these good little uh, I think they're Chinese chili peppers, dried chili peppers, I got from the local Asian market. Now, my roommate is awesome. My roommate's fantastic. She's a good friend, but she is a bit of a wuss when it comes to heat. So, um, I'm going to refrain from going any further than maybe I want to throw in four, but I really, I'll, I'll just throw in three. Three should be enough. Um... 
I don't, I don't want to absolutely torch her on this, which is that that wouldn't be cool. So, nah, I know she really uh, two. We'll go with two. I would normally throw in for myself six or seven minimum, but my roommate is uh, again. She's awesome, and she's also on Twitch, by the way. I'll give her a shout out. She's also the one that got me my uh, my brew here. That was nice of her. Uh, my this is my friend Dodger. Um, Yo, know, Dodge, you streaming tonight? Uh, I want to. To be determined. All right, it's to be determined. Well, so my ro my roommate Dodger of Zion, I'll show up a lot of the times in the background on her stream. She does like uh, tarot card reading. She's pretty good with the fortune telling and sports and such. Um, she'll do Jackbox. She'll do Stardew Valley stuff like that. That's not really my scene. I'm more about. But honestly, like, I'm like one of those rare people who doesn't do a ton of gaming on Twitch, but hey, it's all good. <sighs> anyway, so while we're here, you know what? This is what I can do. I can go ahead and start calculating the macros on what I'm making here. And this is what I will do. So when I make a big, right, it's inconvenient to try and weigh and measure everything. If you guys have noticed, I haven't really been measuring almost anything at all. There is a reason for that. So instead of weighing and measuring everything, that's what's, uh, that's, a, that's a pain in the ass. Uh, instead, what I will do is calculate the macros of the entire pot and estimate what fraction of the pot I eat. Ultimately, even if I'm off day to day, as long as it all adds up to 100% of the pot, we're golden. Have you tried the Halls of Torment yet? No, I need to do that. Um, Guts, Mikey. Uh, do you have your P in Mechanical Engineering? Are you an EIT? I'm an EIT, but because I'm going to be able to retire in less than two years, I don't see the value in getting my PE. And my employer doesn't really want me... Like, my employer isn't very interested in me getting one. <laughs> Too many people flex working their wife their life away. Like, uh, Yeah, exactly. I, I much prefer... Uh, I, I much prefer personally hitting the uh, the work life balance a little bit. Look, if you love what you do, more power to you. Work work away. But for me, I like I like living. <sighs> Living's a lot of fun. I like I, I don't think humans were meant to do the same thing day in and day out, you know, fifty weeks a year for forty years. And I think all too often what ends up happening, this chill, the meat's starting to brown, needs another minute or two. Um, all too often what ends up happening is that people spend all their lives, and this is paraphrasing something from early retirement extreme. What the fuck is this? Um, this is paraphrasing something from early retirement extreme, but I like the way he puts it. People spend 40 hours a week or more, in a lot of cases, consuming stuff they don't really need to impress people they don't really like with money they don't really even have uh, if they're financing it in a lot of cases uh, ultimately all the way to be working until they're 65 when they were finally have enough to retire but at that point they've been working for so long that they never took the time to figure out what it was they really wanted to do and for me to me that seems like a life wasted I think there are better ways to do it. So instead, uh, I am a huge fan of the FIRE movement, which is uh, the approach of instead of working all your life and being dependent on the system, save a vast majority of your paycheck uh, and invest it and let your investments eventually supply an income for you to where you no longer need to work a full-time job. Any of my retirement plan is to buy a lot of tickets when I'm in Montana. A PE is a professional engineer, uh, so it's a license that you need uh, within the United States to work certain jobs and do uh, get your designs approved in certain areas. I don't fucking know, but if people want to do that, more power to them. Hell yeah. So uh, I work out here in the nuclear industry. My pay for what for my degree and for my work experience, my pay is probably below market average, but. My consumption is so far below market average that it doesn't matter. And part of that is facilitated by the extremely low cost of living here in rural South Carolina. The, my, my secret sauce, as it were, to my financial independence recipe is that I don't spend a lot of money. As a result, 
I am able to save a huge portion of my paycheck, and that is why I will be able to retire a lot earlier. I've more or less optimized all my spending. Okay, so this is pretty brown. So we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're going to add in a little bit of liquid. So we're gonna add in a splash of red wine vinegar. And just a little ketchup. Yum, not too much. This ketchup's very sweet. Throw in our blended vegetables and whatnot. And then we still got more mushrooms. We've got our chilies. We got more tomatoes. So we're going to blend that all in. There we go. It's kind of nice. This is relaxing. I'm sure a lot of y'all don't mind watching a buff guy cook, you know? People need to learn taste is relative. This is true. I'll be retired at 35 thanks to family, nothing I did, although I do own a business. Hey, it's even more work than working for someone else. It can be, it isn't always. Investments are smart as hell, smarting and building your own business if you want to live and enjoy life. And I do. And I don't know exactly what I'll do when I'm financially independent. It's really, there's a lot of different pathways. I've talked about this a lot on stream, but um, there's a lot of different pathways I could see it going. Yeah, finish blending this all down. a little more sugar um you remove sugar from your diet slowly you need less of it to feel sweet in general yes that is very true uh sugar is something we get very used to especially because here in the united states it is everywhere it is in so many products added sugars are everywhere 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 and as such um if you ever go over to europe for instance you'll notice that coca-cola or just you know soda pop in general tastes different over there. And the reason for this is that there is a limit to how much sugar is allowed to be put into those sodas. Um, we don't have those sort of restrictions in the United States, but the whole point is that uh, it's very easy to not realize just how much sugar you're consuming in your day-to-day -day diet. I think I am gonna go with the can of, you know what, we're gonna add the cans of chili beans first. That's worth it. Not quite sure how much space in the pot we'll have, so. One can of chili beans. Two cans of chili beans. Do I want to throw kidney beans in here? I do like kidney beans. Mm. Dodd, do you like kidney beans? Okay. Let's see. Let's see how much space we actually have. Stir it all in. Now it's starting to resemble a little bit more of your conventional chili. We're gonna have the space, I think, so. Yeah. We're gonna add the stewed tomatoes. Where'd the can opener go? There it is. Um, love it, dude. Get glad, I, glad I came across your stream for real. Kelsey, it sounds like you're really uh, the kind of person I'd enjoy talking to as well. Please, by all means, I cordially invite you to the Discord. I hope to see you there as well. We have a really good little community there, and if you like the advice that I'm giving out, a lot of it is written down there, so you can you can see a lot of the sources, a lot of the inspirations for what I do. All right, so my stepmom complained the bread was sweet here. Soda had warnings in Mexico. Yes, uh, there's actually, so there's a little Mexican tienda not too far from here that I go to, and every so often I'll stop in and get like snacks. And they will have, uh, you know, a little, it's a black octagon, like a stop sign, and it'll say, uh, you know, exceso sodio, exceso calorias, uh, exceso sucre, uh, stuff like that. There are warnings like that um, in Mexico for, you know, products of that nature. Uh, here in the United States, we just don't have any of that. And that's, it is partially because multinational multinational agribusiness conglomerates here in the United States do wish to maximize profits by keeping people addicted to their junk food but ultimately 
buying that junk food is 100% a choice. No one is forced to. And before you go and talk to me about food deserts, I live in one, okay? There's a Dollar General up there, and that's really about the only thing I can buy in this town. Even that being said, it's still cheaper for me to go in there, live off of rice, beans, and canned vegetables than it is to buy all the crap in this, you know, in the candy aisle or in the chips aisle or in the frozen food aisle, right? It's just most Americans don't want to make that decision. Uh, and that is where I, I'm very much in favor of helping people make the right decision, but ultimately it is a personal responsibility issue. Anyway, we should have the French grading labels on food. They're already much healthier than us. They got even healthier. I personally like the way the Japanese do things. Um, if we're going to talk about, uh, if we're going to talk about health, I really I appreciate the Japanese mindset on a lot of those things. Um, being overweight there is, you know, it's seen, and th this is the other thing too. A lot of people ask me, how do you feel about universal health care? And in theory, I'm for it. My only, my only real uh, hesitation with universal health care is that what I don't want is I don't want to be subsidizing junk. I don't want to be subsidizing, you know, people's bad decisions, people who are, you know, chain smokers, people who are morbidly obese because they choose to eat nothing but junk and sit on their ass all day. You know, people who are making poor health decisions in and of themselves. I don't want to subsidize that. Now, for the people out there who have health conditions that aren't, you know, a fault of their own, that are genetic, that are what have you, I'm a lot more sympathetic to that. Uh, but if you really felt that way, you know, if you're like, yes, we should give these people health care, you know, at taxpayer expense, you should feel even more militant about making sure people make good health care decisions because then it's a, it's a national priority. There's only so much health care to go around. It is a good in shortage in a lot of sense, right? There's only so many doctors. There's only so many nurses. There's only so many hospitals. If we're going to do that, we need to be healthier. We need to make better choices as a country. And I'm 100% on board with taxing the shit out of junk food. That's really, that's really what it comes down to. If you want me to buy in on universal health care paid for by higher income taxes... I'm willing to pony up the tax money if we also tax the shit out of junk food. Because nobody needs junk food. It, nobody requires junk food to live. It's bad decisions people make. It's the same thing. Tax it the way we tax alcohol and tobacco. Because frankly, obesity does just as much damage as smoking or drinking does at this point. You do that, then I'll talk. Then to me it seems serious. But otherwise, I don't... I got I got to see more from my fellow countrymen in terms of you know getting in better shape. Yeah, so we do have the, okay, so there is a part of it, again, that we, we do have more insidious business interests in this country trying to keep people addicted to their ultra-sugary, ultra-fatty, and ultra-processed products. There's actually something called hyperpalatability, which is foods that are meant to exploit human biology uh, and effectively turn them into making them addictive. That being said, it is still a choice to eat healthy, or it is a choice to eat like shit. And before you people say, oh no, but eating like shit is uh, cheaper than eating healthy, it really isn't. Rice and beans are very affordable, and it feeds billions of people on this planet. And even here in the United States, we can't fuck up rice and beans. All right. Anyway, so that, that's, that's, that's a rant for a different time. And again, I'm not saying I'm opposed to universal health care. I'd be for it, but I just want my fellow countrymen to pay their fair share too, especially if they're the ones, you know, if I'm going to be paying for their triple bypass in a couple of years, they better be paying, you know, they better be chipping in too via junk taxes and shit like that. I think that's a fair thing to ask. Right? We accept...
We accept tobacco taxes in this country. We accept, we accept alcohol taxes in this country. Why don't we tax those horrendous two liters of soda that are basically giant diabetes bombs? How the fuck is it acceptable to sell that, right? Like, or fucking Little Debbie's, right? Like, you really gonna sit here and tell me the world's gonna end if Little Debbie's are $3 instead of $2 for a pack? Nah. That's just silly. Uh, throw in a can of crushed tomatoes. And then I'll let this simmer. And that's pretty much all we need to do for now. I think basic food education should be standard. So, well, there is. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you guys. I went to, growing up, so I grew up in an Air Force family. And I went to... Gosh, three different high schools, two different middle schools, and I don't even know how many elementary schools. And in every single one, there is usually at least some sort of health or, you know, basic diet nutrition class. Was it perfect? No, but if you paid attention, you learned what nutrients are. You learned what calories are. You learned generally what foods are good for you and what foods aren't. The food pyramid isn't perfect, but if you... There are ways to learn, how, right? I'm not saying the current education system in terms of eating correctly is perfect, but it's also, it does exist. Let's, let's not pretend like there is no health education in the United States. You did, a lot of people went to health class and a lot of people just didn't pay attention. That's a big part of it. Because a lot of teenagers don't realize the conse consequences. When you're a teenager, you can eat like crap and it's not going to make a difference because you've got a crazy metabolism. But that starts to go away in your 20s. There we go. Get this out of there. We don't waste. All right. So chili's looking pretty good at this point. Now we just got to stir it. Kind of let it stir, let it simmer all together. And the cool thing about chili is that it's edible now, but if we wait an hour or two hours, just let it simmer on kind of low to medium heat. We're gonna turn the heat down. It'll get better. The flavor will get better as time goes along. But I will take um, a spoon, because I wanna see what it tastes like now. And for me, this is how I've always done it. You know, because I don't measure anything, the only way to really figure out, you know, how to zero in on exactly how you want it to taste is, well, bottoms up. That's not bad. Um, I think that could use, actually, I think it could use just a little salt. Not too much. That ought to do. Could also use a little bit more black pepper. Honey hog, meat church barbecue seasoning. Bring out a little bit of the sweetness. And while I know this is technically meant for pork, I found that it works rather well on ground turkey. And then a little bit of celery seed. Mix that all in. That's good. That's real good. Did you see my question? Sorry, no, I was busy tasting it. Let me let me go back with it. Yeah, I'd say drop the food pyramid. The food pyramid puts a little bit too much emphasis on eating carbs, and it doesn't really mention calories and macros. I think that's much more important than dividing foods into like 
Like it says fruits, vegetables, grains, dairy, and, and whatnot. I think we can do better than the food pyramid, but it's still important. Um, why do you think the French are healthier than us? Uh, the French are healthier than us. One of the biggest reasons is because the French have better infrastructure. Uh, the average Frenchman takes several thousands more steps a day than the average American. Because the American infrastructure is heavily car, de uh, car dominated, very car dependent, we are much more sedentary than much of the rest, rest of the Western world. As a result, we expend fewer calories than a lot of our European and especially Japanese compatriots, and we consume a lot more because, again, we have a lot of the excess hyper palatable processed sugary crap. Speaking of, I'm going to put away my ketchup. Start putting away the stuff that doesn't need to be out. Um, and that, to me, would explain the difference on average. A large part of it is that we are nowhere near as active as we should be. Um, and part of that's because we've built suburbs that are entirely dependent around the automobile, thanks to the Interstate Highways Act of 1956 and its consequences, which have been a mistake and highly damaging to the American race. That's my, that's, that is my political hot take that uh, a lot of people seem to think I'm crazy for believing. I think the Interstate Highways Act was a giant mistake. It's actually become a bit of a meme on the Discord. All right, wash out our cans. That way I don't stink. Don't attract fruit flies or anything like that. There we go. Cans, and cans. Oh, that's not gonna go in there. Get our chili beans. Can Ooh, get a little bit in there. Spill a few beans in there. We don't waste anything on this channel. Just a touch of water. Not too much. We don't want to water the chili down, but just have to get the extra beans out from in there. In you go. Much better. There we go. I think we're starting to run low on battery power, which is just the same anyway. Um, but we will calculate macros before we go. So, I'll go ahead and wash this out too. I'll do the rest, I'll clean the rest of the kitchen up later. Don't need to do that right now. But what I do need is a lid, and I have one right here. Not bad, okay. Do you have greens on top, like parsley or green onion? Well, uh, I was gonna get some green onion fresh from the garden, but we're out right now, we don't have any. Uh, how about the Canadians and the Australians? The Canadians have an obesity level almost as much as ours. I mean, their improved health is only negligibly better than ours. Uh, in general, if we're going to look for models to adopt, I would look for one that involves drastically increasing the average American activity. And the best way to do that in terms of least amount of money spent for most benefit is making as much of the country bicycle friendly as possible. I strongly believe bicycles are one of the greatest inventions of humankind because they, instead of burning fossil fuels or even electricity to propel people around, they burn your own ass, which is really helpful. You get skinnier, you save money, and you feel great doing it. Uh, but again, bicycles are amazing. E-bikes are pretty good too. All right, so, um, Let's see here. So let me go ahead and add the macros here. Go back to your question up here, Mike. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the biggest the one of the biggest reasons the United States is less healthy than other countries is because we walk around a lot less. One of the other reasons is yes, we allow much more hyper processed foods. But if we got rid of all those foods, which first off, banning shit doesn't work you'd be better off taxing it, um, which is what I would absolutely be in favor of, a, a junk food tax in general. Uh, 
but the one of the other reasons it's it's a combination we eat too much and we eat a lot of crap and we don't exercise enough it's diet and exercise it's very simple i don't think these crazy tastes at all those are very smart takes i appreciate that everything in moderation and move more yes um Okay, so speaking of moderation, all right, let's figure out, and uh, diet and everything, let's figure out how many uh, calories this entire pot has. So, how are we going to do that? Well, uh, the first thing we can do is we can start out by counting up all the calories and all the cans we put in. Thankfully, we have the basic nutrition facts label. You know it, you love it, it's real simple, it's got all the really important shit right on there. So let's start with calories. Three and a half servings per container uh, for a can of the chili beans and 110 calories per serving. So we take our, out our handy dandy calculator. That's 110 times 3.5. That's 385. We'll double that because we use two cans. All right. Then we'll do the can of diced tomatoes. That's 25 calories per serving. Three and a half servings per container. So that's 25 times three and a half, which is 88 or thereabouts. Stew tomatoes, 35 times three and a half, that's 35, 70, 105, 122. And then the crushed tomatoes, which is 15 times 13, so that's 150 plus 45, 195. Then we added in a whole Vidalia onion, which is, Nutrition Facts says, 60 calories. Then we added an entire package of mushrooms. Now, I usually go, you can go to Nutritionix and look this up. Um, that's my favorite website database for this sort of thing. But I also know uh, how much is in here. It's about, 100, eh, about 110 calories, I think. Um, and then we come over to the turkey, I believe. Boom, Nutrition Facts right here. Serving size, four ounces and 150 calories per serving, 22 grams of protein. Each package is 1.7 pounds, so we gotta convert pounds to ounces. Every pound is 16 ounces, so each pound is four servings. If it's 1.7 pounds, it's gonna be roughly seven servings. You don't have to be exact, as long as you're, you've got a general ballpark, that's gonna be good enough, right? So it's gonna be seven servings times 150. So seven times 150 is, so that's uh, 600, 1,050. All right, so it's 2,395 calories. Um, do we add anything else? Spices and peppers, which is negligible. We'll go ahead and add five calories to bring it to an even 2,400. Okay, so the whole pot is, if you write that down, 2,400 calories, all right? Now, we're gonna calculate the protein. Same thing, 22 grams per serving there, so 22 and seven servings is 154 grams of protein. Meat is our friend. This is lean meat, that's why I like it. Ground turkey is good shit, all right? That's 154 there, plus in the beans, seven grams per serving and Three and a half servings per container, but we use two containers, so it's seven servings. So that's seven times seven is 49. Then for the tomatoes, it is three and a half plus three and a half. So that's another seven. And the crushed tomatoes is one gram per serving, 13 servings per container. So that's 223 grams of protein. That's pretty good. That's as near as makes no difference, a protein ratio of 0 0.1. In other words, there is, for every 10 calories in this pot of chili, about one gram of protein. That's really good. Uh, if you're trying to have a uh, diet of roughly, you know, 2,000 calories, and you get 200 grams of protein, you're gonna be, you're, you're doing great. That's gonna be really good for you, okay? So now we're gonna calculate fat. Eight grams of fat per serving in the turkey, seven grams, that's 56 grams of fat. For the beans, uh, seven grams for both cans. Uh, tomatoes is gonna be pretty negligible. Uh, tomatoes are not a high fat food, so that's 63 grams of fat. All right, 
Now we do this little trick. This is a little bit of math, and it's fun. Math is good for you. All right. So we've got 2,400 calories in the pot. Every gram of protein is four calories, all right? That is a rule of thumb to remember. A gram of protein is four calories. So 223 times four, we've got 892 calories worth of protein in the pot, okay? Now we've got 63 grams of fat. Every gram of fat is nine calories, okay? So that's 63 times nine. So that's 60 times nine, which is 540 plus three times nine, which is 27. So that's 567 calories worth of fat in this pot. So that's fat and protein added up is 1,459 calories. Subtract that from 2,400 means we've got a delta of 941, which means that must be carbs. Divide that number by four, boom, 235 carbs. So the total macro profile of this dish, this chili, is 2,400 calories, so the whole pot, 223 grams of protein, 63 grams of fat, 235 grams of carbs. That's not bad, uh, that's pretty good. So as long as we're pretty reasonable about, say, putting cheese on top of this or putting this over pasta or putting this over bread or putting this over rice, this will be a pretty good meal in terms of hitting our macros. I also had a can of beer while I was making this and I need to reflect that in my food diary. This beer is 70 calories, but it's got the flavor of a full hazy IPA, but because it's not alcohol, it's non-alcoholic, uh, the calories are much lower. That's why I like it. Plus, uh, I think, what is this? I, you know, I never believe this corporate stuff, but I love this. It says 2% of all sales from this company, this is athletic brewing, uh, go to restoring local trails. And I love that because local trails are a huge, huge deal in terms of helping uh, improve the health of the American population, which you know, badly need. We need to be more active. Anyway, so uh, we've got our pot here. We've got our uh, camera, and I think we're, we're more or less done. So that chili's just going to kind of sit and simmer for a while. Uh, otherwise, we are looking pretty good here, so I'm just going to clean up uh, a little bit later. We're, you know, the kitchen's still mostly clean. I just need to put away like the stick blender or the cutting board and wash a couple dishes, but I can live with that. Put this back on the laptop. We're gonna head back over to our little Q&A stand. Uh, 25 Bloomberg Country Health Index. Canada is 14, the US is not on the list. Is that life expectancy? Is that what, what do you what do you mean by health metrics? There is a difference here. Um, I do quite like a little parsley or green onion on top of mine. My roommate doesn't, so I usually put that on uh, mine. Um, oh, uh, one other thing for chili. Avoid the sour cream uh, unless you really need it. And if you do, go for the light stuff just because Sour cream is very heavy in fat and it doesn't add much otherwise nutritionally. You'd be better off with a cold glass of milk to have with it. Milk is like liquid Jesus. It's really good for you. Drink your milk, makes you strong. Especially if you're bulky. If you're bulking, you wanna get fucking jacked. Milk is really, really good for you. Okay, all right, we're gonna do one more of these stretches here. I guess I'll, I'll put it back to health and fitness after I do this. So I want to try and stretch out these hamstrings. They, they, I can feel them, they're tight. Oh. Okay, that hurts. Stanley Cup, what, uh, what uh, team are you guys into? So I'm a Capitals fan. Uh, for the pro sports, I'm a fan of the DC teams, and you can better believe that made me very happy about the recent news in the NFL. 
Uh, she's from, my roommate there is from South Jersey, so she's a fan of the Philadelphia team. So she's a fan of the biggest gong show in the Eastern Conference, the Philadelphia Flyers. You can sit here and give me the stink eye as much as you want. You guys are basically Vancouver East at this point. Sue me. She's saying nothing because she knows I'm right. There we go. All right. Um, let's switch back to health and fitness on here. So we were in category food and drink. There we go. Done. All right. Oop. I don't know why it's not updating. That's weird. Hmm. There we go. Okay, it's updated now. You're a Blackhawks fan? Well, boy, you guys have been through the ringer. You went from probably the best dynasty around 2010. Uh, you know, 2013, you had the cup, and then uh, things got bad. Yeah, th things, things got bad quick there. Um, I, I would say I have... My condolences, but you, you guys have been a media darling for a long time, so I, I don't really care for Chicago, I'll be honest. Um, I don't hate Chicago. I don't hate the Blackhawks, but I, I, don't, I don't have any warm feelings towards y'all. We're back now. Just wait. Oh, boy. Honestly, see, the nice thing is we won 2018 as a Capitals fan. I don't give a shit how we do. All I want is for Alexander Ovechkin to continue scoring goals. As long as that happens, I'm just happy to be along for the ride. Um, yeah, you got handed the next. You, you guys just happened to get the number one pick overall. Funny how that worked out, isn't it? I'm sure I'm sure there are quite a few other teams uh, and quite a few other fan bases that were not thrilled about that. Then again, to be honest, I would rather Chicago get that pick than fucking Arizona, because I know at least y'all won't waste it. Arizona, whatever talent is going to Arizona just kind of dies there right now. So, oh, by the way, I'm a huge fan of the idea of moving the Coyotes to Houston, renaming them the Arrows and watching them and the Dallas Stars start beating the shit out of each other. That'll be a fantastic rivalry. If the NHL just had the balls to cut this malignant tumor that is the Phoenix Coyotes off already. It's Bettman's baby and it, it's, it's not, it needs to die at this point. Am I crying rigged too? No, I don't think it was rigged, but it's a lot of fun to imply that it was rigged. It's, it's fun to meme about it, even if I don't believe it. Um, Mikey, I'm sure you took physics classes in high school and college, right? Well, I had to part of the degree to get my engineering degree yeah yo it's gotta move for sure for sure no they need to move i think they gotta move to houston i really do believe look you can say oh but houston's not a traditional hockey market that's as may be but houston at this point is is almost the size of chicago it's a huge city it's got enough transplants there to support a hockey team uh, and at this point, I got, I got some, I live here in South Carolina, right across the, the river is Georgia. I got people saying Atlanta deserves a third chance before Houston gets there first. I'm like, fuck off with that. No, Atlanta, you've already had two teams. Give Houston a one first. Move them to Canada, give Canada another team. I mean, where'd you put them, Quebec? See, the problem is if you put them in Quebec, I'm down with that, but then you, you gotta move a team from the east to the west, and who are you moving? Columbus? Detroit? Actually, moving Detroit to the west wouldn't be a bad idea. You'd have them play Chicago again. They'd be back in the west. Or better still, I, I would love to watch Detroit and Colorado have to play each other more often because that, that was a fun rivalry. My audio is echoing. Is it? Shit. <sighs> Let me turn it down a bit. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Capro. I've been trying my best to work on audio and I just haven't quite been able to get it right. Thankfully, um, one of my mods is actually coming down here in late August, so I'm gonna uh, probably ask him to come and be my audio engineer for a day and hopefully we can fix a lot of these issues. Might be me. I don't know, I doubt it's you. I, I would, I mean, it could be, but it, you're, I would not, I would not be surprised to find that I've been having audio issues this entire time. 
it's it has been bedeviling me for like a while now just trying to get that right <sighs> oh well so let's talk a little bit about the channel uh for a moment here before we go any further so this upcoming week i am going to be um live on thursday probably will be an old school runescape stream just because it's july in south carolina and that garage does not have air conditioning and i it's hot it's humid and i just don't perform as well in those conditions um i believe friday will be legs saturday will be push and sunday i don't believe i will be streaming because i will be flying up to boston massachusetts uh, for a week at a training for my job. It's gonna be, I believe it's radioactive filtration training, so I'm really excited. It should be really uh, quite a lot of fun. Moreover, it's being held by Harvard and MIT. It's a joint program, so I'm really excited. I mean, those are, you can argue, two of the best universities in the world. Uh, I've never been to anywhere in New England, so I'm, I'm quite excited to see Boston, and this is a really nice time of year. And I'm going to the Red Sox game on August 4th when they come to play Toronto at Fenway. And I've never been to Fenway Park, and it's, I, I mean, come on, Fen it's Fenway, it's iconic. I'm really excited for that. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys are, uh, if any of you, I will say, if any of my, uh, if any of my, viewer audience or fan base is in Boston and you would like to see me, meet up with me, let me know. I would love to make that happen. Come talk to me. Come join the Discord. That's where uh, I'll be able to exchange information and whatnot with you to begin. Uh, that sounds fun. Hitting a baseball game next weekend, actually, too. I assume if you're a Blackhawks fan, Cubs or White Sox? Um, I'm guessing one of those two. Oh. I see we hit 50 viewers, and you guys know what that means. 50 viewers means I have to go and do the splits. Uh, this is, mm. I know my audience, I know you guys. You guys are fucking sadists, and you like watching me suffer, so fine. I'll do it. I'll make it happen. To. I mean, technically, that's not the splits, but that's the best I can do. That didn't feel good. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's uh, sort of the, the, the little fun Easter egg we have for this these streams. Or if we hit 30 views, I do handstand push-ups. I already did those. If we do hit 50 views, I do the splits. What if you hit 100? Let's... What do you do if you hit 100? I, I don't know. Um, would you consider second cousins close or distant family? I think it's subjective, actually. Um, I think it depends on how much of a personal relationship you have. Just talking about my first cousins for a second here. I know some of them really well and, you know, trust them and, like, we're, we're super tight. Others I haven't talked to in years, so it, it really depends. Um, to me, what defines you as close or distant family isn't, your blood or your relation, but it's how much time we, we spend together and whether or not we enjoy each other's company. Um, like my younger brother and I are really close, even though, you know, he lives halfway across the US, we're talk, we talk all the time. In fact, we're actually, I'm really stoked about this. We are taking my, uh, we're taking my mom somewhere special for her birthday. Uh, she's turning, can't say that, now, definitely can't say that live on stream. Uh, my mom's birthday is later this year, and we are going to take her on a really great vacation, and I'm stoked for it. It's gonna be great. Um, don't fuck your cousins if that's what you're asking. Yeah, it, it, in general, look, there are eight billion people on Earth. I would say if you find out, you know, if, if, if you've got a cousin, maybe maybe just don't approach things from a, a, a 
from a romantic view, there are more options out there. How about that? <laughs> my dad is a distant relation. I miss my dad. Mine, uh, my dad passed away in 2020. He's uh, interred up in Arlington National Cemetery, actually. So, God bless America. But uh, as far as this stream's concerned, so that's sort of what the upcoming week has in store for us. Uh, thinking about what else I'm going to be doing this week, I think tomorrow I'm going to hit uh, push day tomorrow at the site gym. Tuesday's ultimate frisbee, and then Wednesday is going to be pull day at the site gym. I think. Uh, you do got you guys do know second cousins are legal to marry at every U.S. state, right? I don't. I'm not opposed to that. Like. If you want to go and do it, you should have the legal right to. Just because I think it should be legal doesn't mean necessarily that I think it's a good idea. You know, you can, right, you can start chain smoking cigarettes. It's entirely legal. I don't think it's a good idea, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, that's it. Hooch, I gotta say that that is an odd that is an odd conversation to start. <laughs> Wouldn't that affect the healthcare system we just spoke about? Not necessarily. If you marry, knowing full well that you're related and you choose not to have children, you're, you're fine, no problems. I, I just again, I wouldn't. There are too many, let's say, societal hurdles involved. Uh, again, this is a this is a strange conversation. Why are we talking about this? Uh, you, I mean, second cousins are not really related. I, I, I don't know. This is this is not a this is not a conversation I've thought about very much. Lord, this is this got this got weird. Um, I, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, trying to think about what else is going to go on with the channel oh um we got a poll running in the discord right now for follower goals uh we are rolling on towards 1700 followers right now i believe we're at 1628 bruh 10 more handstand push-ups hey rules are rules all right 10 handstand push-ups it is We'll go to 10 and sand push ups. I should actually be rested up enough to just bang these off, so it shouldn't be too hard. All right. 10 and sand push ups for who is the third game, did, game over Mexican. All right. Well, 10 and sand push ups it is. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, y'all like this, uh, come join the Discord. Shit, nope, nope. Ah, no, I got confident and I lost my balance. All right, I'll do five more. Damn it. The strength is there, the balance sometimes isn't. No, fuck. Okay. Give me a minute. I'm a little bit dizzy. I will do the other five. Ah. Uh, I had the strength to continue going there. I just lost my balance. I pushed. I didn't. I, I, I leaned a little bit too far forward, and then came right over. All right. Sorry about that. Here we go. Two, three, oh. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Here we go. Oh, God. There you go. 
wasn't expecting that. Now, I, I don't put cooldown. Uh, I don't put cooldown periods on my stuff, but you know, don't be that guy that makes me have to start. All right, as far as that's concerned. Hooch Pussy says, "What do you do if you keep tossing and turning in bed? It depends on what time it is. Um, if it is." Uh, like nine at night, like I'm just trying to get to bed. I'll give myself a little time and then uh, I'll try reading, usually, just like reading a book. Usually that's uh, what I do if I can't fall asleep. Uh, so I've got a couple books I'm reading through right now. One is right here. I'm quite, a, I've, been, I've been enjoying this. It's Arnold's Bodybuilding for Men by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look, you can say a whole lot of things about the governator, but the man knows how to be fucking jacked. He's 75, and he's still probably fucking stronger than me. I, I really, I dig Arnold. I, I like Arnold a lot, actually. I, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he's a good dude. Uh, another one I'm... Uh, trying to get through my local library through the interlibrary loan system is Confessions of a Recovering Engineer by Charles Marone. It's talking about, he's the founder of a, an organization called Strong Towns. Strong Towns is a uh, organization that is pro what's, I don't know if y'all heard of the new urbanist movement, but it's the idea that towns should be uh, walkable, they should be bikeable, and they should be financially resilient. And our current car addicted infrastructure is costing our city lo our cities loads and loads of money that could be better spent on either improving quality of life for local residents or cutting local taxes. Uh, so I think that's a really good idea. Uh, and as a result, I'm a big fan of Strong Towns as an uh, example. So those are two books I would read um, if, if it's early. I'm just kind of trying to wind down. Um, a hot cup of chamomile tea is really nice if it's winter time, but it's uh, too hot here normally for that. Um, if I am hot, one thing I will do, full on, uh, this is just like blunt honesty for a moment here. If I'm really, if, if it's like really hot and I'm like trying not to toss and turn because if I do that, I'll start heating up. So my body's a fucking furnace because of all the muscle, but take my fingers, just really lightly kind of run them up and down my side like this, like all the way up from my, from my hand all the way down my side like this. And for whatever reason, that like kind of gives me the goosebumps. You can kind of see even a little bit of it now. Uh, it gives me the goosebumps and it tends to help me relax, bring my breathing down and cool off. Um, my biggest challenge for getting to sleep is not that I can't fall asleep. I fall asleep once I get to bed pretty quickly. It's getting to bed in the first place because life is fun and I get distracted with all sorts of stuff and then thermally regulating myself. Again, I, I'll put it this way. I'm terrific as a cuddler in the winter because I act as a giant space heater, more or less. I'm a big, big, warm, strong bowl in bed, basically. But... Uh, that's not so great in the summer. Um, I, I put off a lot of heat. It's just, it's, it's part of just having muscle, honestly. Uh, you, this is, okay, this is something that I don't think it's talked about very much, uh, but it's a positive feedback loop. When you start building muscle by lifting weights and eating protein, that muscle requires more calories just to maintain, just to continue having it on your frame. So you add all this muscle in, all of a sudden, your body is naturally burning more calories to maintain it and keep that muscle uh, ready, you know, ready to go for further stimulation. So what does that mean? Well, it's going to mean that you're burning, you're naturally going to be running very warm is what it really means. Unfortunately, here in South Carolina, that's more of a negative than a positive most days, but in the winter, it's terrific. I feel nice and warm. Like I'll put the left to, okay. Left to my own devices, I will keep the thermostat at like 55 in here in the winter. Um, my roommate and I have compromised on 64. Hey, Hooch Pussy, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey, for, fo for following me. Oh, yeah. Kelsey, followed, uh, Kelsey followed Dodge. Well, that's cool. Um, I appreciate that. 
So let's see. So that covers. I hope that answered your question, Hooch. Uh, I like you. You 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 give me good questions to talk about. Some of them are strange, but I don't mind strange questions. Um, so that covers. We hit our workout today. We've done our cooking. Uh, I'm gonna check the chili real quick, actually, before going further. That's important. I'm doing fine. Actually, let me get myself a little magnesium. This is a. Uh, I don't do a ton of supplements, but this is a pretty good one. So this here is uh, a basic magnesium citrate powder. Uh, and what it does is magnesium citrate has been found to uh, improve muscle recovery and uh, relieve soreness and as someone who does a fair amount of lifting four to five days a week I'm, I'm sore quite often so I'll probably do a little bit of this I probably need some creatine too there we go nice liminal good to see you Welcome to the chat, welcome to the bullpen. So, um, how tall am I? Burned in, welcome to the bullpen as well. Uh, this is your first time chat, always good to see new chatters. I am six foot three, that is I believe 190 centimeters. Let me check that to be sure. Yep, just a tick over 190 centimeters. I was dumb and did not put the magnesium powder in before filling it up. And as such, it's all floating at the top now. So I'm trying to stir it in without spilling. That's not bad. I like the flavor. I got this at Costco. It's a uh, raspberry lemonade flavored too. Kind of nice. Is that a morning or evening measurement? You are two centimeters, about an inch taller in the morning? I have no idea. Um, well, you know, now, Hooch, I think you have a point, because sometimes I'll measure myself and it's like six, two and a half, but usually that would be in the evening, so I, I don't know. Between, it's like between, I think, six, two and a half and six, three and a half. You, you figure it out. I just go with six, three because it's easy. I mean, you know, and ultimately, am I wearing shoes right now? No, I'm barefoot. But, you know, you're taller if you wear shoes and all that jazz. Oh, man. very lethargic this week well you know sometimes that happens the I think the key is getting a good night's sleep and it, it's so underrated it's my biggest demon for sure uh, when it comes to health and fitness is you know there will be I have I have my bad days when it comes to overeating um, and I have my sort of not so productive days in the gym but getting to bed on time is my toughest one. And frankly, a lot of the days where I do overeat and not do as well in the gym is because I didn't get my sleep and I'm, I'm all off kilter. Uh, we got Lucia Roy five. Welcome on in. Welcome to the bullpen. How you doing? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Are you a good eater? Like, do I enjoy high quality food that tastes and like to eat a lot? Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know if you were watching me uh, cooking back there, but you know, we made that big old pot of chili. Uh, as for uh, as far as like, do I like to eat a lot? I used to be an offensive lineman in high school, um, and a lot of my audience, y'all haven't, y'all are new uh, to my channel since the last time I bulked. But y'all will see when I the next time I choose to go on bulk cycle, and I don't know when that'll be. Right now, I'm. I'm reasonably happy with where I'm at. I'd probably like to be a little bit more defined. 
I got visible abs, but not quite a six pack. If you know, if I flex, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's not quite as defined as I'd like. Uh, and then, uh, when I'm bulking, though, uh, th that will probably be. I'm guessing I'm gonna bulk around like November, December this year because. Like around Christmas time anyway, you're gonna be offered a bunch of sh a bunch of shit. The weather's starting to get colder, which means you can you know digest a little bit more, use a little bit more of that thermic effect of food, which is a lot of fun. And uh, when I bulk cycle, shit, fam, four thousand calories a day is nothing. I can eat four thousand calories without even thinking about it. Five thousand calories a day, usually pretty easy. I can knock down five thousand calories in a in a day without really thinking about it too hard. Um, I've probably done more than that. What would you guess your body fat percentage is at? Right now, um, I would say probably between 12 and 15. The problem is, right, with body fat getting any more specific than that, if, you had to, if I had to put like a singular number down, I'd say probably 13 and a half-ish. The problem with body fat, I'm just saying, oh, I'm X percent, is that looking at it like aesthetic body fat is gonna be different from person to person. Uh, some people carry more fat up in their shoulders and their arms, some people carry more fat around their gut, some people carry more fat in their glutes and their legs. It, it really does matter person to person on that one. I don't do seasonal cuts or bolts anymore, I just do them if the timing is right. I guess 14 to 15, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could believe that. Um, I do seasonal cuts and bulks, Hooch, because my garage is not air conditioned and uh, you try bulking when it's 95 degrees in your garage. It's awful. It's not fun. <laughs> bulking works really well for me. I love bulking in the winter. That's always, that's the way to do it. Bulk in November, December, January. Eat like a fucking bear, man. Um, are your arms proprioception, proprioception, sort of like consciousness you feel the same? So I've done this with like a tape measurement and my right arm, right, everyone is slightly biased to one side. I'm right-handed. My right arm is ever so slightly bigger than my left. But because I've done so much lifting over the years, you know, with dumbbells and with barbells, for the most part, I've got... I'm not, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty close to symmetric up top. Same thing with my legs. Uh, I think my left leg is slightly smaller than my right leg in terms of muscle mass, but it's close enough to where I'm content with it. Um, and then up here, right, you see, you know, I got my rib cage, kind of makes it a little bit different there. Uh, clean bulking. So, okay. This is where you get into a bit of an ethical thing. What, what do you define clean bulking as, right? How much, how clean is clean? Uh, for me, right, when I go bulking, that means I'm drinking usually close to, if not a gallon of milk a day on top of everything else I eat. And it's fucking awesome. And I love it. I love milk. Milk is, if you're bulking, milk is basically liquid Jesus. It's just amazing. Um, Harbaugh, the coach of the Michigan Wolverines, he talks about this a lot uh, when he's talking about, you know, you know, the high school guys coming a little undersized as freshmen, and he's told like peewee coaches, be like, make sure your players are fucking drinking milk. I want, you know, it's just drink as much milk as your tummy can hold. Like he, he said that in an interview to like a kid. It was asked, he's like, how can I come be a Michigan Wolverine someday? He's like, you drink as much milk as your tummy can hold. And I'm like, mm, mm, this guy. No, I like Harbaugh. He's uh, Harbaugh is intense in all the right ways. I, I, I like that a lot. But he's 100% right about milk being fucking awesome for bulking. Strongly recommend it. Um, what's your wingspan? Um, uh, wingspan, I think my wingspan's about 75 inches. I think it's a, you know what? Let's find out. fan was about as much as tall as I am so all right 
Dodge, I'm gonna need your help here. Alright. You walk like you're chasing someone. Um, as far as milk's concerned, right, whole milk or 2%, really great if you're bulking. If you're cutting, stick to skim, unfortunately. Okay, so Dodge, here's what I want you to do. We're gonna measure my wingspan. So, I want you to take, all right. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can do that? All right. It's longer than, longer than five feet. Right, okay, yes. No, so put it, put it back up there. All right, mm -hmm. so finger to finger set. All right, so now, just hold it on. Okay, so. There you go. Oh, uh, it looks like it is a little over six feet. What What did it say there, 13? 14. 14. Okay, so that would be 74 inches. So there you go, six foot two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, Dodge. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, dude, when I bulk, I'm putting as many calories into my body as I wish, basically. For me, bulking is eat as much as you'd like. Um, in general, I would say it's reasonably clean. I don't just eat crap right i'm not just sitting there stuffing my face with potato chips but i'm gonna drink hella milk like i'm gonna put lots of like peanut butter nuts uh milk meat potatoes grains like mm, good food you know you know what i'm talking about here but just very large quantities of it it's a negative eighth index i i don't know what that means What's the ape index? I've, I've never heard of that. <sighs> Liminal, when you walk, walk with purpose. Walk like, uh, walk like you're listening to a Pantera song. Dun, da, 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 no. Uh, means your wingspan is less than your height. It's just a ratio. It's a ratio of your wingspan to your height. Well, I mean, if it's six point, if it's if it's a six foot two wingspan and I'm six foot three, that's pretty close to even. I mean, that's what that'd be seventy four out of seventy five. So that's let me put in, put that on my calculator real quick. That's seventy four, seventy five. That's point nine eight seven. Like, who cares? That's pretty close. This, oh, it's minus one. Okay, so that's how it works. It, either way. Wasn't a perfect measurement anyway. That's probably true. I, who cares, really? Uh, any tips for widening your arms out from your chest? Well, okay, so your bone structure is going to keep this as, you know, as wide as you're talking about. Are you talking about, like, when it's here? Do you stream every morning? Um, okay, so, yeah, I should tell you guys my normal schedule. My normal schedule is, uh, and I'll explain why my schedule is kind of strange relative to most fitness streamers. I stream Friday mornings at 9 a.m., Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., and Thursday afternoons at 5 p.m. Why? Well, because my day job is nuclear engineer. I spend my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, on site at work, and then Thursday, uh, most of the time, I get to telework, which is nice, but I can't stream during that. I've got work to do. I, I actually, right, when I telework, I actually end up getting more done at home than I do at, at the office, but... It is what it is. Um, and that's part of, you know, I've, and this kind of ties in, and this is why I love talking about this kind of thing. It all ties together, the health, the diet, the fitness, the financial independence, the, the day job, all of it. Because if this community and these numbers keep growing uh, in terms of followers, I could well decide to go the route of a full-time Twitch streamer, you know, in 647 days when I become financially independent and no longer need to work. I don't do these streams because I'm getting paid for them. If you guys haven't noticed, I really don't run that many ads on my stream. I run 30 seconds an hour. That's the minimum Twitch allows me to run. I don't run ad breaks because I think they damage the flow of the community. They damage the quality of the stream and they're not worth the peanuts Twitch pays me because I'm not doing this for the money. Again, my day job is why I'm going to be able to do this down here. I'm gonna be able to be, I will be able to retire before I turn age 30 because I save a huge chunk of my paycheck and I make a decent salary at work. Um, my schedule is listed below, I believe, uh, in, if, you're, if you're watching on Twitch. Um, if not, I, there you go, I just told it. Um, so Lino, any tips for widening your arms outwards from your chest? So if you're talking about this, I mean, not, 
not really. It's that's more bone structure than anything exercise wise you can do. If you're talking about like tips to increase your wingspan, I'm afraid that's not my wheelhouse. I I don't know. Um, I don't have anything. I don't have anything with that. Uh, crash override. Yeah, I'm still on. We're going a little bit longer today just because the audience has been giving me a lot of really good stuff to talk about in chat. We did a little workout. We did a little boxing. We made some chili and. Now we're just kind of doing Q&A, and so I'm more or less gonna continue doing this until the audience is out of questions or, uh, oh my goodness, we've got a raid. Wonderful, welcome Bam Bam Bim Bim. Thank you very, very much for the raid. Welcome on in Raiders. My name is Bull Muscle. I'm a mechanical engineer who focuses on diet, fitness, weightlifting, financial independence, and much, much more. Welcome to the stream, welcome to the bullpen. Uh, I'd recommend refreshing your browser so that way the uh, view count updates. Bam, bam, bim, bim. Uh, come talk to me, man. What, what was going on? What were you streaming? Uh, how, are you, uh, how are you doing today? Come, come stick around a little while. Tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, Neural Lance, thank you very much for the first time chat. Uh, Wendy's non-frozen burgers, do you have a girlfriend? No, uh, I'm single. Um, as far as dating or sexuality, I, I, you know, I, I really don't talk about that too much, but when people ask, I am very open uh, about my answers. The same thing, it's, I sort of talk about that in the same way that I talk about my salary. I don't tell people unless I'm asked. I guess you could call it don't ask, don't tell. I did grow up in a military family. Restream, Ben will be here shortly. Wonderful. Yovan, good to see you as always. Always love seeing you pop in the chat. So uh, Raiders, what we did today, we did a little bit of a little bit of an odds and ends type stream. Today is Sunday, so it's technically my rest day. Um, we hit uh, some kettlebell swings, some jump rope. We did some work on the, the wall bag, so we're doing a little boxing. Uh, we made a big old pot of chili that's now simmering on the stovetop, and now we're just talking Q and A. I'm currently, if you guys saw the title, on a maintenance cycle. I will be kind of staying on maintenance through July, August, September, October, and maybe November, and then going into a bulk. Um, that's probably about what we're gonna happen. I'm six foot three, I weigh about 210 pounds, give or take a few pounds depending on the day. Weighed in a little heavy this morning, um, but that's to be expected. I had a big meal of schnitzel, spätzle, and kraut, uh, and collard greens too for dinner last night. Eh, what are you gonna do? Um, have you been married? No. Do you wanna be married? I'm open to the idea. Thoughts on relationships at this point in your life? Uh, and this is, okay. That's a good question. Okay, so I am a huge fan of punting serious relationships in your teens and your 20s, especially if you're a guy, okay? This advice does change a little bit depending on where you live, but if you are male and you live in the United States of America, uh, your value in the dating scene is not going to be very high in your teens and your 20s. However, if you work, if you spend your teens and your 20s wisely, focus on self-improvement, be that in your job, be that in your hobbies, whatever it is you like to do, your passions, pursue them, uh, be that in physical fitness training, right? Uh, be that in saving money and investing, right? Focus, take your teens and your 20s and focus on the long term. You have so much of your life ahead of you, uh, and I'm sitting here at 28, so this is what I've chosen to do. So I'm preaching what I practice. Um, you know, I, I chose to save huge chunks of my money ever since I graduated college. I chose to get a mechanical engineering degree in college because I knew that was going to come out and give me decent job prospects, even though it meant I was studying. I was doing projects in the labs most of the time. Hey, Jui uh, Kwai, thank you very much for the follow. Um, you and my boyfriend's height, tall guys. Um, and a very German meal, what gives? German food's delicious. Schnitzel's awesome. Spätzle is oh, so carby, but very tasty. And I love kraut. Any apple kraut, sauerkraut, blau kraut, you name it. Um, no, it's not too deep at all. But no, I'm, I'm unmarried, I'm single, um, and I've had 
you know, I've had relationships in the past. I'm, I'm currently not really looking at one because I live in the middle of nowhere in, uh, in South Carolina. The nearest big city to me is Augusta, and frankly, the dating scene isn't very good here. Um, right, it's, it's not that this is necessarily a deal breaker, but I want, you know, in a relationship, I'd like someone who can keep up with me. Yesterday, I went after a leg day, mind you, where I squatted 375 pounds clean and a dirty, slightly above parallel squat of 400. I went and biked five miles down to the local Audubon Center, walked around the trails down there for a few uh, miles, and then biked all the way back. That was my idea of fun. It's, you know, 90 to 95 degrees here most days and very humid. But that's something a lot of people around here, for whatever reason, drives me nuts. South Carolina is so achingly pretty. It's one of the most beautiful states I've ever been to. And nobody fucking takes advantages of all the wonderful things to do outside here. Um, and as a result of that, frankly, well, the obesity rate around here is north of 40%. And that drastically slashes the dating pool. Um, day 10 of my cut. Killer Jigga, you keep at it. <sighs> hey, Abby Kuhn, welcome. Good to see you. You trails fun in the bushes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's just, it was nice. You know, I went out and uh, it, you know, that you gotta, this being the deep south, right? The mosquitoes are pretty aggressive, but you learn to live with them um, for the most part. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've just learned that they're going to treat me like a steak dinner no matter what I do. And bug spray is a joke. It doesn't really work here. Um, we've got, actually, here in South Carolina, we have worse mosquito problems than parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and India. Uh, it's, it's really bad, actually. We have, there's uh, both the Aedes aegypti and the Asian tiger mosquito are everywhere here. And they are aggressive. Um... It sucks, but you know, I can learn to live with it. It's, it's not fun, uh, that part of it, but the natural beauty is so, so great that you, you, you just learn to live with it. Uh, what state did you grow up in? Uh, burned in. So my father served in the United States Air Force for 29 years. I lived all over the place. Uh, the longest place I've lived anywhere in my entire life was four years in College Station, Texas. Yes, I did go to A&M. Uh, and I, uh, I am a diehard Aggie for that reason. Uh, DEET spray doesn't work for you. <sighs> eh, not really. They are, they are aggressive. Um, not increasing wingspan of your neck. Increasing muscle mass to make your arms appear wider from a front-facing view. Again, outwards from your chest. Is it traps? Is it lats? Is it shoulders to widen your stance? Okay, I gotcha. Okay. So to make your arms appear wider, we're talking like... Right, if I fold my hands, we're talking making our arms look like wider like this, like this way right here. Um, that's gonna be your biceps and your triceps, right? Your triceps are kind of a forgotten muscle. Uh, you're really good to hit those with dips, right? Uh, pull downs, overhead extensions, uh, and close grip bench. Uh, biceps is the ultimate vanity muscle, but come on, who doesn't like biceps? Um, pretty simple do curls do chins for those as far as traps up here um, traps are pretty easy to work I usually only do two major traps exercises those are gonna be shrugs right and they're gonna be I call them vertical flies some people call them front raises I whatever terminology doesn't mean much to me uh, I what I do is I'll take a bar or I'll take two dumbbells kind of hold them about here come up and back down and up and back down uh, you guys have seen me do those on my pole workout days uh, chest is well bench press baby because embrace your inner bench bro chest day is fun um, lateral head of delts too yeah you can do delt flies so that's right come back um, and then lats, that's, lats have been my, sort of my weak link for a long time, right? So let me, let me try and do a decent lat spread here. 40 viewers to 100, you have to come up with something. Hey, well, uh, Kelsey, come, we've got an ideas and feedback channel. Actually, 
the followers goal, what I'd like to do, I think we're gonna hit 2,000 followers by the end of the year, and I'd like to maybe consider goals. So some people have talked about like shaving my mustache, eating a whole Costco rotisserie chicken live on stream, uh, doing like a car wash stream or something like that on my Discord. We, we've got some ideas. I'd love to hear uh, more though from my, from my audience as to what they'd like to see. So let's just get a decent lap spread here. It's not terrific, but you can see I got I got a little bit of those wings forming, right? So the lats, those you primarily work with bent over rows, right? So or you know lat raises. Let's just show you from the backside perspective. Don't shave that mustache, it's hot. It's weird, my community feels very strongly about this. They either love it or they hate it. Most people are not indifferent. Who's in your house? This is a Dodger of Zion. She's another Twitch streamer, she's my roommate. Um, we've been good friends for many years and um, yeah, it's nice. She gets cheap rent, I get a good chunk of my mortgage paid for. Works out well for us both. Red plaid crop top and short shorts are a must for a car wash. Again, if you guys are interested in that kind of content, come to my Discord and we'll figure out what we should do for a follower goal, okay? I'm really very open to ideas, but there isn't enough participation in the ideas and feedback channel yet. Uh, so there are 49 viewers, like so here's a good example. There are 49 viewers watching this right now. I have had, I think, no more than 11 votes on any option for followers goals right now. That's not a big enough sample size for me to say, okay, my fan base actually wants this. Do you think people follow you for your content or because you're half sexy? Um, be honest with yourself. Uh, Blog Red, thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate that. Crash Override, honestly, I, I think it's probably, I think you've got probably some people who follow me for the content or because they've been recommended by someone. You've got some people that follow just because they like that I'm, you know, well-defined and muscular and all that. Um, and then some people that start, they come in for, hey, this is a good looking dude on Twitch. And then they'll stick around because I have a lot of interesting things to say. I've had people tell me that's the case. Um, Ultimately, I don't care why people show up. I just hope people take something positive away from this that they can apply to their own lives. Really what I'd like to do, what, what makes me the happiest from doing these streams is having people come back and tell me, hey, you inspired me to start eating better. You inspired me to start lifting more. You inspired me to start saving more money for you know, the future. You started. You, you inspired me to start uh, working towards my goals a little bit harder. That's what really, that's what sells it right at home for me. That's what I care about most. Um, your looks uh, are the very first impression. I get that. I don't think that's why everybody comes in. I definitely think there's a chunk of my audience, most of whom never talk in chat. Yeah, I know you're there, lurkers, um, that just enjoy the view, uh, that just enjoy some of, uh, some people just say they, they just enjoy the meat show, so to speak. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have any problem with that. That's totally okay. I'm, in fact, I'm rather flattered by it, to be honest. It, I didn't have a very high self-esteem for a really long time, so it, it's still very weird for me to get this idea of, wow, people think I'm attractive. But um, I don't, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't bother me. Oh my goodness, another raid. Hey, it's our main man, Physico Commander. You have raided me, I think, three times now, and it has been very recent. Welcome on in, raiders. Thank you very much. We're actually well, supposedly nearing the end stream, but if people keep raiding, I'm gonna keep going. Um, welcome, raiders, uh, from Physico Commando. Let's give uh, our, actually, we're gonna have to give Bam Bam a shout out as well, but let me give Physico a shout out, because he's raided me several times, and he's a little bit smaller uh, streamer for now. Go give him some love, guys. Hang on. There we go. 
Uh, just got done with my meal prep. It was about a six hour stream. Holy moly. Um, lighting is looking great. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, that actually is really helpful. Thank you for letting me know. It was a view for me that I grew your personality. See, I think a lot of people are like that crash override. Um, but yeah, go give Physico Commando some love. So new Raiders, uh, refresh your uh, screen if you can. That kind of helps update the views. But for those of you who are new, my name is Bull Muscle. Uh, I do full, I do physical workouts. I do fitness advice, uh, diet advice. I am working on becoming financially independent, which will happen in less than two years. So I talk financial advice as well. We do cooking sometimes. I was uh, cooking a big pot of chili over there earlier, uh, and we do all sorts of fun stuff here. Sometimes I'll play games on my off days. Uh, welcome on in. Thank you very much again, Physico Commando, for the raid. And bam, bam, bim, bim, I'll give you a shout out too uh, in just a moment. Uh, I need a little bit more water. It's talking so much. Any pose for the Raiders? Any pose? Okay. Um, for the Raiders, let's get. How about that? I'll give you two for the price of one because I got two raids today. <sighs> Jamie, you knew you had it in you anyway. Just need a bowl to sum that from you. Awesome. What workout will help me pass gas? Um, that's a name. No, I did see you. I did see that uh, you were on your, that was your 10th day of cutting. Jig, I saw that. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with chat. There's a lot of people in here. But yeah, dude, that's awesome. Carry on, man. Keep going. Uh, I bet you are going to make a ton of progress if you stick to it, man. Take it one day at a time. Keep making those good decisions, and you're going to see it pay off. You're going to see it pay some dividends. Um, what workout will help you pass gas? Yeah, yoga, probably. Um, I, and this, is, this is a very odd question again, but I'd say squats probably do it. Leg press, deadlifts. Um, if... I'll be honest, man, farting is not why you should be working out. That, that's, a, that's a byproduct that just kind of happens. Focus on improving muscle growth uh, when you go to the gym, not about how much you can gas other people. Funny though that is. <laughs> um, should I put this chat in slow mode? Nah, I can catch up. Um, biceps, abs, Let's see here. Starmy, good to see you. I haven't seen you in chat so far today. Um, there we go. Leg day shits are real. Oh my god, dude. My my digestive system will play fucking tricks on me sometimes. Uh, when I do, try to go for like a heavy squat set, I'll be like needing to shit immediately right beforehand. And it's like, son of a bitch. I asked, did you need to? Did, you, did I need to go before I started this? No, no. You're only doing this now because I'm just about to put 400 pounds on my shoulders and try to squat it. Asshole. This you Literally. made me realize how much of an out of shape loser I was, and I needed to change. Aw, well, I'm really flattered by that. I'll tell you something, okay? People who are out of shape are not losers. This is something I do want to say. You're not a loser, and there's nothing wrong with being overweight or being out of shape or anything like that. You're only a loser if you make bullshit excuses for yourselves, right? It's very simple. This is, this is the thing. This is something I want to talk about, you know, body positivity movement, right? And uh, the... Body positivity, I'm okay with. Healthy at any size is bullshit. D absolutely not. If you are overweight, like to the point where you're unable to walk at any like reasonable amount, that's no, you're not healthy. But you're only, again, I, I only, I will only call you out on your bullshit if you are making excuses for yourself. If you're going into the gym, I don't care how heavy you are, how underweight you are, how skinny you are, how new you are, whatever. If you're going in there and trying your hardest, that's all that really matters. And you should feel proud of yourself if you know, and you know, you know if you're doing that or not. Jiga, it sounds like you are, so much love, much respect to you for doing that. Seriously. Uh, it takes a lot of balls, man. It takes a lot of courage and dedication to say, I'm gonna make this positive change for myself. And it sounds like you're really getting after it. So m much respect, man, much respect. Love overweight people, especially when guys have man boobs. Well, hey, uh, you know, you, you let your freak flag fly to each their own. But 
again, I the only thing that pisses me off, it's not people who are out of shape. It's people who make excuses about being out of shape. That's that's the thing. Do I parallel my feet during calf raises, or do I widen them a little not to interrupt? Um, for me, I, I I'll do either or. I don't think it matters very much. That's a good question, Liminal. Uh, I, I don't. I'd say variant. See what you're see what you're more comfortable with. I think for calf raises, uh, how canted your feet are doesn't matter very much. I'm out of shape because I'm what's hired. No, but like, okay, cat bro, you've been talking to me, right? In your inspiration channel, how you're making the decision matrix, how you've started getting your sleeping better, you started feeling better uh, after like all the therapy and all that. Like you're making good decisions. You're trying your best. I see that in you and I have a lot of respect for that. So you carry on too, man, all right? Never take me serious. I, I, I need to stop taking you seriously. Crash over on TJ. You you say some you say some funny shit in here. Oh man. All right. So um, trying to think of anything else I need to say. I guess I'll go ahead and give you guys the schedule since there are two new raids in here. We got a bunch of new audience members. Uh, I will be live on Thursday afternoon. That'll be Thursday. July 27th at 5 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, U.S., so that's New York City uh, Standard Time. I live in South Carolina. Uh, I will be live Friday morning at 9 a.m. That will be leg day. I might do deadlifts that day. I'm not sure. I might. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, that'll be leg day. And then Saturday, uh, the... The what Saturday, July 29th, uh, will be push day. We'll do push then. Sunday, the 30th, I'm flying out to Boston. So, this normal rest day on Sunday, kind of odds and ends type stream, might not end up making that happen. I'm not sure when I'm flying out, I think it's pretty early. So, uh, I don't think I will be live on Sunday. That following week, uh, from July 30th to I believe August 5th, I'm going to be in Boston, Massachusetts. I will bring my laptop and my camera. I doubt that I will do much in the way of streaming. Might do like a kind of an impromptu Q&A thing if my fan base really wants it, but uh, I'm not gonna have access to a gym. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kinda do my best uh, to stay in shape and all that. Sidious Monk, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that, y'all. We are, again, we are continuing our climb upwards towards uh, 2,000 followers. Uh, I've been asked, by the way, um, Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Hey, trust the damn plan, Big Red, for sure. Trust the damn plan. But uh, I've had a couple people ask me, hey, you know, have you ever thought about making a Twitch a partner push for Twitch? Uh, now, Twitch partner push requires 18 streams and a minimum of 75 viewers average. I am not really ever hitting 75 viewers. Um, I, the only time I'll hit it is when I've gotten hit with a uh, raid from Joe Workouts, who was amazing, by the way. Um, but uh, actually, let me, speaking of raids, I wanted to raid, what was his name? Bam, 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 we'll give you a shout out. Thanks for the raid. Bam. Uh, bam, 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 bam. Did I do that right? I did. Okay. Um, anyway, we'll give, we'll give bam, 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 a f we'll give a follow too. Since he rated us. Um, and okay, so where was that? As far as the uh, as far as the partner push. Uh, yeah, so Ari, or also known as Akrashi, I'll give him a shout out as well because he's awesome, is currently going for one. I think he has between four and five thousand followers right now. We're sitting here, we're doing great at 1600, but for those of you wondering if I'm gonna make a partner push anytime soon. The answer is no, not yet. I think it would be really cool. Um, I think it would be pretty awesome if I could hit partner before I go financially independent. So that would be before May of 2025. So maybe we'll make a push around then or depending on how fast the channel grows, could be sooner. Uh, Koal running, Zachbot, I don't think Zachbot's a partner, um, but he is, I like his stuff, Zachbot's cool. Um, Jigga says, isn't Twitch scre screwing creators over is even worth it? This is the fun part, right? Remember how I told you guys I'm not running ads on my, on my stream? 
Twitch has nothing to screw me over with. That's the fun part. I don't, I run the minimum amount of ads that I can on Twitch. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect me. The reason I'm doing these streams isn't for the money, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't care if I don't, you know, I, it doesn't, it, even, even the amount of people who are in here, I don't care how many people I'm talking to so much as it is, you know, that the community itself is starting to grow, become this organic thing where we can help each other and help, and we can inspire people to make, you know, better decisions. As long as that's what's happening, as long as something good is coming out of this, that's really what matters to me. I, I'm not, the money doesn't, meh. I make plenty of money at my day job. And again, I make enough to where I'm able to save 80 plus percent of my paycheck. So I want to talk you out of it, but Twitch recently cut profit sharing. If you want to make money, kick is better. I've heard people say that. I don't have a big enough uh, push from my audience to want to consider any other platform, but I'm open to that idea. <laughs> yes, Ag, but what about more money? Eh, I make enough. Sometimes you got to learn to become content with what you have. Um, again, like it's the same thing with being financially independent. I could continue working full time after I go FI, but why? The only thing I would do with that money is probably give it away to charity. I don't, I have, okay, there's a few things I'd like. I'd like to put air conditioning in my garage. That would be, that would be quite nice. Maybe a second bathroom, but like, yeah. Even then, I can live without both of those two things. I'm very happy. I don't, I don't need the money that badly. Um, what about more money? Okay, yeah. Contentfulness is something everyone needs to work on. Absolutely, myself too. Sometimes, you know, for me, it's a lot of things too. It's like the journey is the destination. That's something you kind of end up embracing with fitness. It's very, it's it's very important to make sure that doesn't kind of flow too far into the rest of your life because then you can end up working too hard uh, you know, on your career and end up missing out on a lot of the other really great things life has to offer. Yeah, see, I'd like to install an AC window unit. The trouble right now with that in my garage is that because of the two cars charging in there, the circuit is overloaded. So I need to upgrade the uh, underlying electrical system before throwing in anything else. Um, What's a getting over it stream live on Twitch? I guess people don't know about what getting over it is. Getting over it is a game invented by Bennett Foddy, the guy who invented Quop. Uh, and the idea is it's like the trolliest possible game. Like it's basically, it's a game basically that's designed to piss you off with how frustrating it is to play. Uh, like the controls are sp supposed to be just super, super inconsistent. It's just, it's just like, go, go look up like getting over it. Like I think Markiplier, like a lot of the really big high YouTube stars and Twitch stars have done getting over at streams over the years. It's just like, it's, it's just supposed to be a super trolley game. That's the idea. So the yellow jacket off topic. Do you probably, do you think these low T commercials and clinics have a legit point? Like testosterone in, in fact impacts your life that much. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't really trust uh, any organization that spends a large chunk of its money on television advertising, I'll tell you that much. Uh, in general, TV isn't worth watching all that much, I don't think, um, or at least conventional you know, media. As far as uh, testosterone is concerned, yeah, I've heard that testosterone levels in men are falling uh, in this day and age, and I don't know how true that is. Frankly, what I care a lot more about is, you know, focus, keep a stoic mindset, focus on what you can control. I can control how hard I'm gonna bust ass in the gym, what I'm gonna eat, how well I'm gonna sleep, and, you know, how hard I'm gonna work uh, at the gym, how I'm gonna, or not at the gym, sorry, at my job, how I'm gonna invest, like, focus on all of that. You know, if you find that you're still having the issues that come with low testosterone, maybe go to a doctor and find out. But Eh, I, I wouldn't put much stock in it. Um, you should play Only Up. Yeah, apparently Only Up is the new getting over it. Um, not everything can be a mindset, though. That's true. Uh, if you have low T, but I, 
I, I'm not a doctor. I, I can't give you professional medical advice. I can give you health and fitness advice all day long. I can give you investing advice all day long, but I don't know whether or not you have low T. That's something you're going to have to take medical testing to find out. I mean, if you've got the symptoms, it may be worth going and looking, but I, I would talk to a doctor about that before, you know, doing something because the TV recommended. Uh, Baklava says, uh, hi to you, Dodger. Yo. Mindset is important. Some things are biological, physiological. That's true. That's very true. Um, but, you know, in, in general, f focus on what you can control first. And if you get to the point where, yeah, it's something that, you know, you need to go talk to a doctor, talk to a therapist about, yeah, then pr pursue that. Um, make that decision. But for me, I, I find that it's best to, it's best to keep it simple. All right, uh, ketamine has improved my neuroplasticity a ton. And that's fantastic, man. I, you've talked about that. It's supposedly done a world of good for you. And I love hearing that. Um, I can't really do a whole lot of that kind of uh, therapy because the nuclear industry is trapped in the 1980s when it comes to anything new in terms of medical. Uh, it's also the same reason I am natty. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, is this guy taking steroids? The answer is no, because if I did, I would get fired. Uh, I work in the nuclear industry and I get drug tested. So yeah, no, I, I am 100% natty. Uh, the only supplements I take are a little magnesium when I'm sore, creatine, protein powder, and that's really about it. So I see you like I said, oh, I gotta go relax and game. Okay, crash override, good to see you, as always. Um, I think, I don't know about you guys, I think, I see, see about having a raid soon. We've been going for a hot minute here, we're going four and a half hours, but the audience is just kinda, you guys have, it's, you, you guys have made it really easy because you guys have been hanging out. That's just been fantastic. And active chat means I can just go on and keep talking forever, but, uh, you know, I do kind of want to go enjoy the rest of my Sunday at some point. So let's find out who else is on Twitch. Who's live right now? Huh. Our man Crash Override. What the hell? We'll go, we'll, we'll go rate him. Um, before we go, I already talked about the schedule, I already talked about that. If you like what I do and you really want to hang out more, uh, come check out the Discord. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Come check it out. Uh, we're gonna go raid Crash Override 415, I believe. Unless, Dodge, you going live? No, not now. Okay. All right, yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go raid Crash Override. Oop. Piri Ply says, I hope this next chapter brings you boundless happiness, love, and fulfillment. May your dreams continue to manifest in reality. May you find success in every endeavor you pursue. Always remember that you have the power to make a difference in this world, and that your light shines brighter than you could possibly imagine. Wow, that's a, that's a really deep first time chat. Thank you. Um, very well said. Yeah, that is very well said. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and welcome to the bullpen. Glad to see you. Uh, you kind of caught the end of the stream here, but I uh, hope you hit that follow button. I will be live again Thursday afternoon. We're going to raid Crash Over Ride 415. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to go ahead and say. Oh, Big Red asks, next cooking stream for your bowl, can you make a healthy pizza? Hmm, that's a tougher challenge, but I can see what I can do. Um, we're going to raid Crash Override. I want to say thank you to the following followers. Sidious Monk, uh, Blavari, Drukai, Hoochpoo, Kelsey, Eric4506, some dude watching stream, RJD, Fit Fitness, Hayden21, Here's Luca, Early Middle Ages, thank you very much for the follows. Bam Bam Bim Bim and Physico Commando, you two rated. That was awesome. I'm so thankful for that. Um, and I think that's everything. Y'all, take care. Y'all have a great Sunday. And as always, make good decisions. Those good decisions form your habits. Those habits form your values. Those values form an ethos. That can be the guide star through the rough, rough waters of life. If you want more content, come join the Discord. It's a really great time there. All right, much love. Come in for the raid. And raid ski.
All right. Good to see you as always, YouTube. Uh, go check out, oh, I'll say this to the YouTube audience. Go check out uh, the USF, United Ship Posting Federation, uh, on r slash urinating tree and on YouTube. These red 5478 that puts them up. Some good videos, good, good sports ship posting content there. Cheers.